Hey guys, Dr. Kahu here and welcome back to my channel. Now today I'm going to be doing a new What If movie and that is What If Goku Wished To Become The Strongest? The movie. Now as usual guys, subscribe to the channel if you haven't already and if you guys just give me 200 likes, that'd be great, I'll, I'll appreciate that. I'll still bring out some more movies here and there, but I still, it'll be really cool, okay guys? And knowing that this is going to be kind of OP Goku from the start and um, yeah, I hope you guys enjoy. It's not going to be a long What If, like 3-4 hours, no, no, no. So I hope you guys all enjoy and stay tuned for all the other videos I'm about to do. Bear in mind I still need to catch up on the videos that I haven't done because I've honestly completely forgotten about them. But um, just stay tuned and I'll do my best to get them out, okay guys? And not only that guys, I hope you guys all stay um, safe in this troubling time that we all live in. And yeah, I jibber jabber enough guys, let's get into this new What If movie and that is What If Goku Wished To Become The Strongest? The Movie. So of course guys, let our story begin. Now, I know Goku wouldn't use the Dragon Balls naturally for the wish, okay guys? I understand, it's just not Goku, even though everyone uses the Dragon Balls selfishly. I'm just going to state anyway, just for the convoluted plot of the story, that one, Goku used the wish, and two, is going to be when he was younger, when he was captured by the Pilaf gang, and instead of Oolong making the wish, it's Goku, okay guys? So from there guys, the story begin. Goku sees Oolong about to make the wish and he thinks Oolong not going to be fast enough. So using his just plot armor, he's going to push straight out of Oolong's way and jump up in the air and he's going to scream before anyone else says anything. Shenron, I wish to become the strongest. At first, dead silence. U um, was it called? Oolong was about to make his wish too. And so was, um, um, what's his name? Well, the other fella, the other guy, the Pilaf gang leader. Um, what happened is, but Shenron hears nothing. He stands there and looks at Goku. Well, he just pretty much floats there and looks at Goku. I cannot make you stronger than my user. However, he grants Goku a wish. He goes, this wish that you have asked from me, I couldn't grant it fully. However, I have given you the ability to be able to become the strongest. Goku's looking at Shenron like, what do you mean? Because you're Saiyan heritage, you have the unique ability to become stronger no matter where you are. When you go through critical conditions, or almost die even, and you recover fully, you become way stronger. That's a natural latent ability of your Saiyan heritage. It, and also with your tail as well, you can turn into a massive monstrous beast. Ten times stronger than what you are. These are what naturally come with you. I've just amplified them. Giving you the chance to continuously break those limits. Break those um, abilities. And Goku looks at Shenron. Shenron's about to fade away and he goes, simply put Goku. Your speed, your strength, your ability to take damage, even the ability to heal, and your stamina will continue to far exceed natural limits to the point where eventually your body will become the strongest. I have given you a wish to use desire. Farewell. Shinon disappears immediately and Goku stands there. He's looking at himself, not realizing the latent potential that he has, the power that he has. He looks at the Pilaf gang that they're desperate and Goku puts his hand up and shoots a massive key blast, not killing them per se, but takes them out. And the peel-off gangs out. Everyone sees Goku and like, whoa, you just used that wish? Oolong was about to berate Goku, but Goku just doesn't care at all. And so what goes what happens is they all um, go back. Goku goes to Master Roshi's, just like in canon. However, this is where things is about to change. When Goku goes to Master Roshi's, he meets Krillin, and all that stuff goes down here. However, thanks to Goku making that that wish, everything he, he does with Master Roshi, he takes off immediately, he excels super fast. And so Goku proceeds to dominate everything. He gets really strong, really fast. Everything he does, he adapts to really quickly. Master Roshi sees this, and so instead of training Goku for the full three years, he makes sure that he trains Goku to a certain point because he sees that Goku's going to turn into a bad version to what he used to be. So in turn, Master Roshi, in the first year of them training, signs him up to the um, Tenkaichi Budokai tournament. And this everything happens earlier, but it's not, not currently he doesn't enter because he's too weak, okay? He's way too weak. But with Goku, he's really strong, pushing up Master Roshi's alley at this time. And as they get into the battle, it's made very clear, thanks to Master Roshi's uh, um, own experience, that he dominates Goku. But thanks to Goku's ability to adapt, 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 adapt really fast, thanks to his Saiyan heritage pushed to its limits, 
Goku is able to easily um, outpace Master Roshi. The only reason why Master Roshi won is because he was able to use Goku's own momentum against them and he chopped Goku out of the arena, okay? In turn, even though Goku was became stronger than Master Roshi in the fight, what goes down is Goku himself still lost and he knows that. In turn, he took he learned a valuable lesson. He found out one that that's Master Roshi he fought and two that despite him gaining strength and becoming stronger than Master Roshi almost immediately, it's the experience that took Goku off guard and he failed due to his own incompetence. So Goku realizes very early that there's always going to be someone stronger than him for now. Because, well, he will just keep getting stronger and stronger and stronger. He'll become the strongest no matter what. Any, any obstacle that's put in front of him, he will become stronger. Now that he knows that strength alone is not the only thing he needs to do, he needs to become tactical, masterful. Everything he does needs to change. And so after Goku loses the, um, the Chaka Chun, he goes back to Master Roshi's island and he tells Master Roshi that he knew that was him. Roshi explains that um, Go technically that he's got nothing more for Goku to learn from him. Goku's already surpassed him in every way. But what he does is he teaches Goku the Mafu Bar and the, the, the paralyzing and lightning attack. And he, and, he tells, and he sends Goku off to um, what's it called? Korin's Tower. And why I say that is because Goku is rapidly developing really fast, really fast, okay? And so Goku gets to Korin Tower that, and he, he climbs it really easy. Bear in mind, Goku doesn't really get tired, okay? Not at all due, due to the fact that his potential stats are being boosted to the max. And so the more Goku pushes himself, the easier things is. He recovers his stamina quickly. He doesn't need to eat as much. He, 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 all his injuries almost recover or um, not instantly yet, but they will soon. And so as Goku climbs up Korin's tower, he meets Korin and it takes him only a little bit of time for him to catch the the ultra divine water at first the first one does nothing but the second one goku drinks it and he immediately feels the effects it makes goku even stronger it pushes goku's limits even more the wish of the dragon ball plus the magical divine water pushes goku's properties even more and so when goku finished doing that instead of goku coming back to the human world first Korin gives goku a nimbus which goku does take and goku climbs up to kami's tower now normally he needs to have the extendo pole to get him there, however Koron just tells Goku to use the Nimbus to get to the bottom and he has to climb his way all the way to the top and he does so. He gets to the bottom, climbs all the way up and he meets Mr. Popo. Now I'm just going to state that Goku's going to spend a lot of time there going backwards and forth, okay, learning from Mr. Popo and learning from Kami. Goku's going to meet Kami Mr. Popo really early in the stage of the story, okay, and he's going to spend a lot of time there. All the natural adventures that Goku should, should have had. He kind of misses out on a lot due to the fact that he's actually learning faster and gaining more powers early. Now Goku took him, took him some time but he managed to get past Mr. Popo and then he meets Kami. Now when he meets Kami, Kami states, I saw the wish you made young man and at first I wasn't happy about this but seeing the way you are and how the way you do things opens up the possibilities that maybe you can become a better guardian than me. Goku looks at Kami and he goes, are, are you sure? And he goes, yes. And he goes, how about a kid? Do you want to become the next my successor? And Goku goes, well, not really. I want to become the strongest. I don't want to just stand here and look over my planet and do nothing. Kami takes Goku's at first offensive, but he listens to Goku. And so I'm going to state that Goku spends a lot of time there. Now, he still takes off. The, he still takes out the Red Ribbon Army, okay? And when I mean takes out, he destroys all the Red Ribbon Army, even Dr. Joro. Okay, he kills them, wipes the Red Ribbon Army, and all of them are gone. Okay? And the only reason why Goku did this is because Kami was watching and he told Goku what he was training with Mr. Popo. And so what goes down is, now I'm starting to do a good, good time skip until the point where um, Goku meets, well, King Piccolo. King Piccolo gets woken up, because I'm still going to allow that. King Piccolo still needs to be woken up by the Pilaf gang, okay? And so when he wakes up and he, he's on this flying fortress, by this time Goku has really matured, okay? He has really matured. He becomes really, really strong compared to everyone else. He's the strongest on the planet, massively, by miles compared to um, that. Now let, let's just state that Goku has has a clear understanding upon how to freely transform into his eight form, but he's still unsure on how to control it yet. So he keeps that in mind. But what happens is, in the introduction of King Piccolo to young Goku, King Piccolo tries to state to Goku that if he had, if he used the Dragon Balls to wish um, for youth, he'll be able to take Goku. And Goku goes, "That's a good idea." And so he works with uh, Mr. Po uh, um, Mr. Popo. Um, he works with King Piccolo to find the Dragon Balls. At first, Kami thinks Goku's stupid, and Goku goes, "Oh, don't worry. Let me make the wish." And King Piccolo looks at Goku because he can feel Goku's power, and he's kind of afraid of Goku's power right now. And so what goes down is, as Goku gets there, 
Goku, um, um, what's it called? King Piccolo is about to make the wish, but Goku kicks King Piccolo on the head. Sorry. And Goku tells him that he's making the wish, and he turns to Shenron and goes, Shenron, I wish for you to make Kami younger again. And, Shin and Shenron hears this, and Kami's like, what? Up in the lookout? But King Piccolo goes, you betray me? And Goku smiles at King Piccolo. Kami gets his youthfulness back, and Shenron scatters, so this time, King Piccolo does not kill Shenron. King Piccolo gets up and Goku just smashes him away and tells him what? Do you think I was going to work for you? Hell no. I, I've been training with Kami for a few years now. He's become just as much of my mentor as a friend to me. And so what goes down is as King Piccolo tries to pull himself out of the rubble and his children try to attack, bear in mind they haven't attacked um, Krillin and them yet because, well, they haven't. And Goku hasn't been around them, alright? He's been, he's been away with Kami for a while. So the situation with Krillin fighting Tien and all that, that's still going to go down, however, it's a couple of days earlier before then, okay? But Goku dominates, dominates King Piccolo massively. And when it comes time to end Piccolo, King Piccolo himself thinks that Go Goku is about to kill him. And Goku goes, I'm not that stupid. He kicks King Piccolo down, puts down the jar, the Mafu bar jar, and he's like, Wait, no, are you serious? I'm not gonna. And Goku puts his hand up and goes, Mafu ba. He captures King Piccolo and slams him into the jar, seals it immediately. He looks at the Pilaf gang and takes them all out. He takes out all of King Piccolo's children immediately and destroys the Flying Fortress. Now, I'm still going to state that some, for some plot reason, King Piccolo still managed to make the Piccolo egg. However, Piccolo is not going to be as strong, as strong as he was in canon, okay? Just by, there's still going to be a young Piccolo. Actually, no, no, I'm just going to rule out Piccolo. There's going to be no Piccolo in this world, okay? So let you guys know, no, no, Piccolo Jr. It's going to be a young Kami. So any kind of thing you see is going to be a young Kami, okay? And so after P Goku defeats King Piccolo and destroys his entire forces and everything like that, he takes um, the bottle to Kami, to which Kami is one, angry at Goku for making him young. Two, King, he is happy that Goku has captured King Piccolo and he sealed him away. And so Kami keeps, um, gives um, King Piccolo to Mr. Popo, to Mr. Popo to Agatha. And from there, Goku, Goku states that he's going to go visit his friends before he comes up to do his grueling training again. And so what goes down is Goku leaves, he sees his friends, which shocks them more on how powerful Goku, they, uh, Goku is. They see Goku on Nimbus. And at this time, Goku is not, not, not a stupid fool, okay? He's not a dumb person. As much as he is in canon. He, he doesn't realise that as much as all his physical stats and all his other stats have been bo boosted. Or boosted, my bad, boosted, boosted. Um, so because his intelligence has been slightly um, boosted as well, even his ability to process information has been increased. So Goku slowly but surely picked up more and more intelligence over the period of time, became more smarter watching the world with Kami interfering over a period of time, getting stronger and stronger. Now, Goku, um, after Goku sees his friend and Krillin goes into the Budokai Ten Tenkaichi fight, Goku is not going to enter. Goku states that he's not going to enter, but he's going to watch on and see his friend and see his master and all that. In the end though, it's uh, Master Roshi that wins. He teaches Krillin and he puts Tien in his place, you know? So, there's that. And Goku says, well, he's got to go now. He says goodbye to his best friend Krillin again. So he's goodbye to Master Roshi, even Bulma, his first friend. And then Goku flies off a number back to, um, what's it called? Um, Kami's Lookout. Now, being back at Kami's Lookout, Goku spends the next three years non-stop training. When I mean non-stop training, pushes himself not non-stop. He goes into the room of spirit of time. He goes into the, the time room itself that sends him to another time period, like 500 years in the past of his people. Goku wants to learn the history of his people, so Mr. Popo tries his best to help Goku learn about the Saiyans. And he found out, through Goku, found out that the Saiyans were kind of ruthless or bad people. And Goku wanted to, they were like space pirates, and Goku didn't like that at all. And so he told them that, um, he, he promised Master, uh, Master Rishi, pro promised Mr. Popo that he'll make sure that he's nothing like his people and push himself to become way stronger. Because by the, by the way Goku looked at it, despite him being the strongest on Earth, he was weak compared to these guys. And even though they were just illusions on the mind, Goku saw that these guys are so much more powerful. And so what goes down is he, he won, passed the test of staying in the room of spirit on time for a whole year. And two, Goku asks Kami if he can remove the limiter for the room of spirit on time as well. And so even though Goku ch trains with um, Kami for three years in the real world, he technically trained with Kami for a good, uh, um, let's just say, 
a good five years extra, okay? And when I mean five years, the rumor spirit of the time, he used that multiple times. And I know people are thinking, but he wouldn't. You know, that's just stupid. No, this Goku is just increasing and becoming more and more powerful every moment, every day. He's feeling the drive to become stronger, stronger, and stronger. By the time it comes to the um, the 23rd Tedekai, I'm um, Tedekai, Tenkaichi Budokai. <laughs> when it comes to the 23rd one, um, what goes down is Goku appears. And also, um, what's it called? Kami appears too as the old man, like in canon. And he, Goku uh, blitzes through everyone. He even meets Chi Chi and defeats her. Now, Chi Chi goes to Goku, Do you remember your promise you made? And Goku goes, Well, kids, you can't expect me to keep my promise when we're just stupid little children. He goes, If one of me to marry you, get to know me first. And maybe, and she's just shocked to hear Goku say that. Even Bulma, you know? Goku being a completely changed person. Bulma even sees Goku, you know, look at him, and she's like, Whoa. Goku's really changed, he's gone buff and stronger. Just bear in mind, Goku's really strong, really buff. He pushed himself physically and mentally. Now, when it came to Tom, Goku whitewashes everyone. Whitewashes everyone. When it comes to Kami, Goku just annihilates him. Annihilates Kami and stands over him and goes, Kami, you can hide your facade. I know it's you. And, and what happens is Kami comes back and goes, Good, I just want to see what my, my new guardian is going to be like. Goku goes, Oh, I'm not going to become your guardian no more. I used the Dragon Balls to make you, wish, make you young. And so I wouldn't need to become guardian. I don't want to be locked down into that position, Kami. I want to become the strongest and I will protect Earth, but I'll do it my way. Kami is shocked and kind of annoyed, but at the same time respects Goku and goes, Very well then, I respect your decision, young Goku. Just note, when the time comes and I am over this job, then I'll, I'll either sort, sort, search you out or your son or your, any of your children because they'll have the same latent potential like you. Goku thanks um, Kami and Goku leaves. And I'm just gonna state, guys, just for the what of sakes, Goku's still gonna marry Chi Chi. However, this Goku is not gonna be an ignorant fool. He would have learned so much from Mr. Popo that Goku knows how the world works and everything like that. And so, before Gohan's born, Goku gets a car, gets a license. <laughs> he figures, I don't wanna work farming all my life. So, what Goku does is he, he, he makes it easier by he finds the ship where he came from, he takes it to the, uh, to the briefs. There they, they break down the technology and make ships, gravity devices, everything you name it from this device. They make star charts and everything. Goku asks is all he wants is 50% of all the money that's made from it. But almost like that's a steep price but okay. And so Goku forever will be continuously paid for the rest of his life by the Breeze. So he'll be the second most richest person, well the Sun family will be the second richest people behind the Breeze, okay. And Goku doesn't need to do nothing. And so what goes down is Goku tra he spends all his time training for the next five years until the Z, um, um, Dragon Ball Z actually starts. And Gohan's still going to be born and he's still going to be a scholar. However, Chi Chi's going to uh, accept Goku training Gohan all the time. Bear in mind, Goku is going to have a gravity chamber and going to have some sensu beans because he's not stupid. He asks Koron if he can, one, have sensu beans, two, grow them, and three, maintain them on Earth. Koron wasn't happy, but... Goku was a student and he trusted Goku's judgment. So of course he gave Goku three sensu beans. He grew three trees from there. He had nearly unlimited sensu beans. So what goes down is Goku gets to train in his gravity chamber all the time. Okay. So the first the first year of Goku training, Chi Chi doesn't have Gohan yet, but she's going to, he's gonna be born next year. Goku's only able to train ten times gravity. The next year, fifty times gravity. The year after that, a hundred times gravity. And by the fifth year, Goku tra tra trains at um, 250 times gravity. Okay, and he's been doing that for ages. So this Goku is going to be ridiculous. And I'm a ridiculous, like strong, 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 strong. Okay. And he's ha ha he's going to have the ability to make his key look like 1%, you know, like normal canon. And so what goes down is Gohan and Goku are extremely powerful. Extremely powerful. Gohan was a scholar and he's still, he's still a nerd and he's still soft as hell. But he's powerful, he can turn instantly into a massive warrior, destroy everything, powerful as, okay? So the strongest person on earth is Goku, quickly followed by his son Gohan, despite him being a four and a half year old. Yep, Gohan is the, sh the second strongest. And, because honestly, if anyone wants to disprove that Broly's potential was greater than Gohan, Broly's potential was 910, he was, I think, like, almost five years old, pretty much, four or five years old, look at him, he was massive. He kind of reminded me of Gohan when he was a kid, but Gohan's latent potential was... What's it called? 1310? That was Gohan's latent potential and max power. Like Broly's was 910. So in turn, if that is the case, yeah, Gohan is, uh, for my opinion, the strongest Saiyan. But anyway, I digress. That's my opinion. No one else's. Gohan's go just wasted potential. But anyway, when Goku sees Kami, or sees, or sees Kami, sees Master Roshi and all that, the interaction still goes the same up until the point when Raditz comes. 
When Goku sees his brother, he goes, huh, a Saiyan. Goku's used to seeing Saiyan armor and everything like that. And Raditz goes, oh, you're not surprised to see me, I see. And Goku goes, no, who are you anyway? And he goes, I'm Raditz. I'm your big brother, Kakarot. Goku goes, hmm, big brother, you say. Kami, are you able to read his mind and tell me if he's telling the truth? Kami looks at Goku and Kami goes, Goku, what do you think this is? Uh, um, what do you think I am? A lie detector? And he goes, no, you're the guardian of the earth. And you're young now, so you can't interfere with things. And he comes like, he goes, wait there. He looks at them, um, what's it called? Raditz's mind, he finds it. Yes, Goku is the son of Bardock and Gine. Raditz is his older brother. And Goku goes, oh, cool. If that's the case, how, how strong are you? Is this how strong you are at this present time? Raditz goes, yeah, this is way stronger than you. You're weakling. You're not even at a power level 100. Goku smiles and he powers up a little bit to match Raditz's. He goes, is this how strong you are? Raditz is shocked. Really shocked. And if you guys hear any noise in the background, my window's open, there's kids outside, there's people outside talking, so we kind of hear, hear some really loud noises. I apologize, but it's just that time of the day. But anyway, when Raditz sees Goku flex his key up to his level, Goku goes, I can become stronger than this, and suddenly powers up to 10,000. It scares Raditz immediately. He's like, oh, you're this powerful Kakarot? And goes, this is nothing. This is not even a percent of my true power. And when Raditz hears this, and Vegeta hears this, Goku even tops up pushes his power level to 20,000. He goes, this is double that power now. And Vegeta hears this like, no, this can't be. Raditz, is this really his power level? And Raditz is shocked hearing Vegeta over the intercom, one, hearing that, and two, just like, he has no idea. He's like, uh, Kakarot, you're, you're this strong? Goku goes, this is nothing, nothing. And if you're really my brother, then you wouldn't want to fight me because you'll die, you're not dying. Goku deactivates his power. And Vegeta is shocked, um, um, Raditz um, grabs his scouter and, and he smiles, he crushes the scouter immediately and he goes, <laughs> my brother's stronger than Vegeta, I'm happy, finally safe. And so from there Goku and Raditz talk for a bit and Goku finds out a sum of Raditz's life, you know. And what goes down is Goku smiles and goes, well, I'm glad you made the right choice. I can, I can make you stronger and you can meet my family and make a home on Earth. Raditz is still kind of iffy about it, but... You know, Goku is stronger than Vegeta. And so what goes down is Raditz seeing his nephew and he goes, Oh, we can breed with Saiyans, humans? He goes, yes, we Saiyans can. And our offspring becomes stronger than we, us, naturally. Raditz goes, you don't say? And he goes, yeah, my son's, my son's probably as strong as you, if not stronger. Raditz like, oh, what? And he goes, damn, I don't have my scouter to find him. And Goku goes, don't worry, I'll teach you how to sense key without that damn machine. And so what goes down is Goku goes, how's your ship? Is your ship still intact? And he goes, yeah. And he goes, cool, here, send it to these coordinates. And, and Goku makes a phone call to Bulma and goes, hey, Bulma. And she goes, yes, Goku, what's up? And because bear in mind, Goku's flying off back to his house and he goes, oh, um, well, since my brother's here, he has an intact ship, a better version to my own. Uh, I'm, I'm going to send it to your guys' um, business location. Same as always. Bulma smiles and she goes, you could have just sent it to me when you were here. And good idea. It'll be better. Our technology will be much better and it'll benefit more. Maybe there's some new updates. And Goku goes, yeah, whatever. And so Raditz sends the ship to Bulma and increases Goku's revenue. When Raditz gets out to Goku's place in Mount Palzu, the normal house where Gohan used to live is all the same, looked after, everything like that. However, um, down down a little bit further along, um, Goku uh, has like a mansion kind of house thanks to Chi Chi uh, wanting to get everything. They have uh, workers there. People helping them out. Even the Ox King, you know, comes around all the time. So Goku is living a really luxurious, luxurious life. He has people training there all the time because they want to become strong like Goku. Bear in mind, it's not, it's just, yeah, Goku has what is, yeah, has, has his own everything. And he's just, yeah, he's just the number one in this world. He keeps getting stronger and stronger. And so what happens is, no one knows, well, Goku, Raditz don't know that Vegeta and Nappa are coming because Raditz grabbed the scouter and, and broke it when he found that his brother was stronger than Vegeta. And so what gonna ha what's going to happen is, the whole year before Vegeta comes, Raditz is training with Goku, and I mean training with Goku. He, he's getting pushed every day. Bear in mind they have sensor beams, they have a gravity chamber, they can go up to 250 times gravity, and he has a he has a strong battle partner like his brother Goku. Yeah, Raditz is going to get extremely strong, extremely strong. And thanks to um, having access to the new ship, they were able to get some schematics for healing chambers. Okay, that wouldn't work as good as um, sensor beams, but it wouldn't take as long to make. Uh, I'll heal someone will take at this present time um, once uh, he's finished it'll take about 24 hours for them to fully heal someone from there from death but it works you know helps the humans the human race out and so what goes down is 
when Goku and Raditz are training, Raditz is, is just extremely powerful, okay? Like, it's ridiculous where how strong Raditz has become. And I'm sorry to say, because Raditz was Goku's older brother and, and in turn had a high potential or strength level, you know? He's, I'm just not going to state he's lacking, okay? He's, he's he, he needs some respect. And so I'm going to give Raditz an uh, easy, easy win over Vegeta by Miles. He's had a whole year to tra train with the Goku that is strong as hell. Now, the reason why I haven't um, disclosed Goku's power level yet is because... Well, power levels are irrelevant, okay? And just actions show otherwise. But anyway, what goes down what goes down is after a year of Goku and Raditz training together, well, Goku must, must like, training Raditz up and Gohan and everything like that, one, Raditz adapted to his world and he loves Earth. He loves the food, he loves the people, you know? He likes the world. And one thing he loves the most is he loves having his nephew Gohan, because Gohan, one, is smart, but just like Raditz, two, he likes to learn and likes to learn from his uncle a lot. And three, um, well... He's a Saiyan, and in turn, Raditz just enjoys his life being there with his, um, with his new family. And so what goes down is, when it comes to the day with Nappa and Vegeta lands, Goku and, both Goku and Raditz sense their key coming, and Kami warns them upon two ships entering Earth, much like Raditz's ship. And Raditz goes, damn, it must be Vegeta. And Goku hears this and goes, all right, well, let's go see them then. As Goku and Raditz fly off, they're flying, and Raditz like, and Raditz is kind of nervous. Goku goes, "What's the matter?" And he goes, "I, I've, he goes, I finally get to." And Goku just places his hand on Raditz's shoulder. He goes, don't, "Don't worry, big brother. You get to, you know, well, you get to put them in their place, pretty much." Raditz smiles and thanks Goku, you know. And so they fly off. And when they get there, Vegeta and Nappa have just smashed into the city, and they're getting out of their space pods. And Goku and Raditz land right in front of the ships. Gohan lands on Goku's shoulder and Goku's like, Gohan, what are you doing here? It's like, I come to watch Dad, I want to see you and Uncle beat these two Saiyans. And Nappa's like, ha, that brat's got that brat's got a mouth. I should kill him already. And if you guys hear any sounds, I am so sorry, but I can't like dictate how reality works around this area. I'm sorry, it annoys the hell out of me, but yeah. But what goes down is Redis is just looking on and smiles at first. And Goku sees that Raditz got rid of his kind of nervousness, in a sense. And as Raditz lands, Vegeta um, scans Raditz' uh, um, key, well, um, he's in the scouter, and Raditz' power level is 18,000. And Vegeta's like, no way, no way you became that strong. And he goes, well, what do you mean? That's not my true power, that's my resting power. Raditz immediately powers up, uh, he powers up, and he pushes his power to 24, 25, 30, boom, Vegeta's scouter blows up, and so does Nappa's scouter. And when I see the uh, Vegeta's like, uh, uh, and he goes, what's the matter, Vegeta? And Vegeta's like, get him, Nappa! And he's like, but, but what? Crush him now! But Vegeta and Nappa rush at, rush at Raditz. And uh, Raditz just looks at them and he flexes his key a little bit. And he instantly punches Nappa right in the gut, destroying his armor, but not killing Nappa. But taking him out of commission with one massive hit. And as this is going on, the humans on Earth are recording this, watching these two people... And these two people take out these other two people, you know? These aliens that are land. Nappa hits the ground and Goku picks up Nappa while he's knocked out. And he goes, Phew, that was one. You gonna take he goes, Are you gonna take Vegeta seriously? And he's like, I don't take the I don't need to take the little prince seriously. In fact, I think Vegeta should give up the title of being King of All Saiyans. You're the most powerful Saiyan to ever live, Kakarot. The title should go to you. And Goku goes, as much as I would like it, and he goes, No, brother, I'm gonna beat Vegeta and by by law of our Saiyan race. Vegeta will have to advocate his power as Prince Vegeta. Vegeta looks at, uh, at, looks at Raditz and goes, Damn you! He flies around to Raditz, Raditz catches his head and goes, What's the matter? Vegeta uppercuts Vegeta right in the face, grabs Vegeta's head, jumps up in the air and slams him to the ground, absolutely disrespecting Vegeta. What's the matter, you little shrimp? Oh, you don't like being stood on. Instantly, Raditz stomps on Vegeta's face. You don't like it, eh? Kicks Vegeta around. He goes, You don't like being pushed around. He opens up his hand, shoots a key blast, blasting Vegeta, blowing half his armor off. Vegeta gets slammed into the mountain. All Vegeta is thinking, like, what the hell is going on? And Vegeta's hanging down, his arms like um, barely damaged, he's hanging down. And he's looking at himself, I'm, I'm Prince Vegeta! I, I, I'm the strongest Saiyan! Raditz appears right by Vegeta and kicks him on the side of the head. And he goes, you were one of the strongest. Spins around, sending Vegeta flying again to another mountain. And then Raditz appears on top of Vegeta and lands on him, slump, stomps on his chest. He goes, this is where you stop, Vegeta. Stomps on Re Vegeta one more time. He goes, this is what everything you guys have done to me. I've been a loyal servant, 
punch Vegeta in the gut, makes him cough up blood. And you've treated me like trash all my life. He, he continues to beat Vegeta down until the point Vegeta's lost consciousness now. He can't, he can't sustain himself. And as Raditz is about to kill Vegeta, Goku appears, still holding um, Raditz, of course, uh, holding Nepo. He catches um, Raditz's hand and goes, We were great, brother, that you weren't going to kill them. And Raditz is like, I'm sorry, brother. I just, I just let my let my anger get the best of me. And he goes, Don't worry, it's part of us saying, it's part of us being saints. It's all about taking control. Goku stops Raditz and pulls his hand away. Ah, these two look like they need medical help. Raditz goes, Should we give them a sense of being? He goes, Hell no. Goku states, We'll put them in the chamber and let them heal slowly. And Raditz smiles and goes, That's the that, that's the brother I like. He picks up Vegeta and goes, <laughs> Prince, you're not Prince no more. Kakarot, as the victor of this match, I declare you the new king of the Saiyans. I don't give a damn what you say, Kakarot. Vegeta, Goku's like, What? What? But don't I have a say? He goes, Yeah, your say is you you are the strongest Saiyan. I beat Vegeta. I can't beat you. The title goes to you, fool. And so Goku's like, <sighs> and as they're flying, Goku's like, hey, do you know what I realized? And he goes, what's that? I'm married to a princess. So in turn, I'm unintentionally going to become a king. And he goes, what do you mean? He goes, well, my wife's father is the Ox King. He's a king, actually, of his own land. And Red is like, no way, really? I did it. Damn, Kakarot. And Goku's like, how did it know? I just realized now. Imagine how I feel. I feel stupid. I've been married to this woman for years. And Raditz is like, oh, I can see why Chi Chi likes to do certain things. Okay, now sweet as she's scary as hell. And Goku walks away. They're flying away and they get to um, an area back in Goku's house and throws them both into the chambers. But luckily for, um, uh, what's it called? Goku, Vegeta's um, scouter was still kind of partially working. It was only the glass part and the register part that can scan the power levels blew up everything else so the, the communication device everything still played up and as and and the recording device is still there and so when they get into the goku's base in their house and they throw vegeta and napper into the healing chambers goku looks at the device and hears some sounds coming from it and it goes and he instantly um gets uh one of his workers to plug it up and when they plug it up they hear all the entire audio that was recorded talking about um what's it called uh, a secondary line listening into the conversation freezer um, all that stuff, and when Raditz hears this, it's like, Freezer, he's coming here? And, he do, and what happens is the guy goes, the, the, the human that was working there, he goes to analyze all the technology, because bear in mind, Goku has his own type of monopoly empire at his place, you know? He's a rich, he's the second richest person on the planet. He's got to have people help him out, you know, besides Chi Chi. So here's a work crew looking through all his technology, you know? They're pretty much capture cool workers, you know? And as they go and analyze all the, uh, the, the data they got, what goes down is Freezer's going to be at Earth in the next two to three years, okay? And so Goku and them have two to three years to, well, get ready. But this is when um, Raditz states, Oh, we don't need to worry since the Namekian Dragon Balls here can wipe anyone that dies, you know? And saying that statement, Freezer's soldiers picked it up and they go, Namek, Namekian Dragon Balls wishes? All that stuff? Bring him back to life? Freezer has the idea to go to Namek and so that, that still goes about. Now, what goes down is... Because Goku didn't die, he didn't meet King Kai. Yet. Alright? Yet. <clears throat> but what happens is, after, um, what's it called, the interaction, and when Frieza finds out, when Vegeta and Nappa wake up, Vegeta is completely angry. He's completely personally lost to Nap and Raditz. He gets out of the healing chamber, and he stands up feeling absolutely strong. He's like, what the? And Raditz goes, here, put this on. Vegeta looks at Raditz and goes, Tch. You did, and he goes, what's the matter, Vegeta? And he goes, it's Prince Vegeta. And he goes, no, that title no longer belongs to you. I won. Vegeta, fair and square, I called you out and we fought properly. I would have killed you. You would not be dead right now if it wasn't for my brother. I named him King of the Sands. In turn, Vegeta, you should shut up and bow. Vegeta's shocked to hear Raditz say that and talk, actually talk down to him. And Raditz is looking down at Vegeta. Nappa's shocked, but hearing that Raditz did follow Saiyan tradition, Nappa goes to Goku and bows to him. Um, he goes, uh, Your Majesty, sorry, and Goku goes, None of that, none of that. As long as you guys please just don't, I'm not to, um, to change from the evil ways, I'm sweet. Vegeta's like, He scoffs at it. Goku goes, Either that or you choose death. Goku opens his hand up, powers up a massive keyboard. And Raditz is shocked, Raditz starts to sweat, and, and Vegeta notices that. Bear in mind, Vegeta realizes that Nappa is so much more stronger than him. He wasn't even trying. And for Nap for Raditz to sweat at this massive energy ball that Goku holds in his hand, it's a big deal. And so Vegeta just instantly grits his teeth, he's so angry. 
and he just bows onto the ground like um, what's his name? Napa did and Magic Goku goes, did they not listen? I told them not to do that. And, and Raditz goes, it's just saying here it's just Kakarot, just take it for now. And he goes, ah, stand up. He goes, we got bigger bigger things to, uh, um, free, um, bigger fish to fry pretty much. Because at this present time, they believe Freeze is coming to Earth. However, he's going to Namek at the, um, at the same time. Goku states that Freeze is going to take three years to get to Earth, so we need to train. And Ra Vegeta goes, train it beneath me. And Goku goes, and yet my brother is ten times stronger than you. Vegeta's like looking at Reddit and looking at Vegeta. And Vegeta's like, oh, oh man. Then Goku goes, so what's to say about not training? Potential is nothing. Unless you train it, your potential is all good as gone. And so what goes down is Goku puts them all through, through extreme training regiments to get them strong. Vegeta wants to get strong. He wants to, you know. <clears throat> but slowly but surely, Goku and Vegeta um, train, and Vegeta trains more with Goku because he's stronger than Nappa. And Nappa pushes himself, and he actually trains with um, Raditz. Now, for a good month and a half, they train like there's no tomorrow. And Vegeta starts to see the progress, you know, healing chamber, sensor beans, the Zenkai boost. Vegeta's like, damn, this is actually pretty good. He actually learns to like training really early. He even picks up um, learning how to sense key relatively early too. So when he senses Goku's key, even a little margin opponent, Vegeta sweats and his like the whole his whole world ends seeing the gigantic mountain that Goku was his power. From Vegeta's perspective, it looks like Goku's mountain starts at his feet and reaches space. And Vegeta's like, oh, okay. Um, I'll just make Raditz my rival. <laughs> and so, what ends up going down is, yeah, for a month and a half, they train non-stop, and Raditz is really a piccolo, a piccolo, my bad. He doesn't exist. Um, what's it called? Um, Nappa, he really pushes himself. He really likes Earth too. And he gives, he asks his bomber upon to see if she can re-engineer these... Um, What's it called? The Cybermen, and she does, but she makes the humanoid version, okay? More like android type versions. And she makes the, all these things like uh, versions of them so they can, if need be, they can make an army of these to protect Earth from invasion, you know? And Nappa likes um, Bulma's sense, and uh, unfortunately for Vegeta, he still falls for Bulma's seductive look and her big, big mouth, you know? So that still comes to the play of Vegeta, Bulma still become a thing, just not yet. Now, at this present time, um, as Goku and them are training, a certain got North Kai looks down upon Earth and gets in contact with someone. That being Kami. Kami tells, um, talks about getting, uh, talking to Goku and the situation with Frieza. So King Kai talks to Goku and explains everything to Goku what's going down. He even gives Goku a glimpse of where Frieza is and if Frieza gets to drag the wars he's gonna make a sort of selfish wish like Goku did and to Goku that's not a good thing. Not at all. Not a good thing at all. And so he asks his, um, what's it called? King Kai for the coordinates for um, Namek, and when Vegeta hears that, he goes, Namek Kakarot, our ships have the coordinates to there. Goku goes, Oh, yeah, your ships. And he goes, Yeah, just lock it in, and we'll take us about, um, take us about a good six months to get there. And Goku goes, Hell no. And Vegeta's like, What? And he goes, We'll just take one of my ships. And he goes, And so what happens is Vegeta gets the coordinates and puts it into Goku's, um, Goku's well, capsule called Black Base at home. And yep, sure enough, it'll only take, um, what's it called? Um, about a good 10 days to get to Namek, okay? 10 days. And so Goku goes, cool. He boards the ship up and he tells Chi Chi he's taking Gohan with him. And at first, Chi Chi was about to disagree. However, Chi Chi was like, yeah, actually, you know what? Our son will need to learn new things. He is an alien after all. And he goes, thank you, Chi Chi. And he's going to be training more too. And she just like, don't kill my son. And Goku goes, I won't. I promise I won't. Yeah, I won't. And then um, Chi Chi looks at Raditz and goes, he goes Raditz. And he goes, yeah, make sure the idiot looks after Gohan. And he's like, yes, ma'am. He leaves, and so it goes down, and Bomber's on the ship, and he's, Goku's like, what are you doing here, Bomber? And she goes, well, one, um, the ship um, the, the ship that you have is not fully automated, like the ones that we have back at Capture Corp, but none of the ships back at Capture Corp are fast enough. So in turn, I'm going to be here to help you regulate the computer process. Not to worry, you guys can train your gravity area. I'll sit in an area where you guys don't affect it, okay? Where well, the gravity doesn't be affected. And this man teaches smiles and goes, hey, Bomber, here, then you can teach Gohan this. Chucks on the book, and from there, Bulma and everyone go to Namek. And everyone that goes to Namek is Goku, Raditz, Vegeta, Nappa, Gohan, and Bulma. Bear in mind, they have two healing pods in there, and 20 sensu beans. So, yeah, the uh, 10 day of training, 10 days of training is going to be hectic. Vegeta, Nappa, and Raditz all wish to die. Goku is going to annihilate them. 
and annihilate them. And they're gonna try their best to go against Goku, but Goku, anytime he trains, he gets stronger and stronger. He doesn't need to go to get Zenkai boost because any form of training for Goku gives him a Zenkai boost. And, and you guys are thinking like, what? How do you think Goku's going to become the strongest being? The strongest, okay? He never sees the strongest in the universe. He's just quite literally just stated, I wish to become the strongest, okay? So in turn, Goku is just gonna keep getting stronger and stronger, no matter how much training he does, okay? He will never plateau. And so in the 10 days of training, everyone gets to uh, what's it called, Planet Namek. Everyone's massively strong. Nappa has a power level of 100,000. Raditz has a power level of 12 million. Vegeta has a power level of 6 million. And why I say that is because Vegeta has great potential, okay? Nappa's old. And yeah, he's actually really old and he's not, a, he's not, he's reaching his prime, more or less, okay? Like, much like Paragus in a sense where he's just going to decline and decline because he's at an old state. Vegeta, however, because of his, his massive potential, he actually is half as strong as Raditz. Raditz 12 million, Vegeta 6 million. God himself is easily, easily strong, but he does more studying than training, okay? Not as hard as Vegeta, Raditz, or any of them. But Gohan's still, still gonna be strong, so I'm gonna give him a power level of 2 million just for now, okay? 2 million. Vegeta really has taken a liking to Gohan because he's just a, a Saiyan with so much potential, it makes him proud, you know? And Vegeta has finally come to terms with the idea that he's no longer Prince Vegeta. He looks at Goku as King Vegeta. I've got King Vegeta, King Goku. Or King Kakarot, but he still calls him Kakarot. But still, Goku is the Saiyan King, and you want to see why in, in the future. But what goes down is when Frieza, uh, uh, but because he bear in mind Frieza's been there for ages, Goku doesn't even hesitate. He's about to fly off, but he's contacted by Guru. <coughs> and Goku says, "Huh?" And when Guru asks Goku to come to him, because he's got the last Dragon Ball, because Frieza's forces almost have all the Dragon Balls. What goes down is Dende's already dead, unfortunately. Mori's dead, all the Nam Namekians are all dead, but um, out of Guru and Nails, and Frieza's heading towards Fri Frieza's, um, Guru's location. So without him hesitating, Goku looks at the area, he tells he tells Vegeta and them where to go, because they already know where the Dragon Balls are. And so they head out. Gohan uh, is, was going to stay with Bulma, but he says, no, I want to come with you, Dad. And so he goes off and Nappa goes, Kakarot, and he goes, well, I'll stay with the, I'll stay with the Earthling. Vegeta gets a little bit annoyed about that, he goes, he goes, Nappa, he goes, come with me, the Earth One will be fine. Bulma looks at Vegeta and goes, hey, what do you, and he just looks at, um, they both had this little moment, and Bulma's like, <laughs> alright then, walks away, she makes herself, um, what's it called, her defensive area with her ships, you know, she's sweet, she's fine. Well, so what goes down is they all split up, Raditz, Nappa, and, and Vegeta head out to gather the Dragon Balls, while Gohan and, Go uh, and Goku fly off to Guru's lookout. And when they get the Guru's lookout, they get there about a good 20 months before Frieza does. They get there, enter in, Goku sees Nails and it's like, well, you remind me of Kami. Interesting. And Goku walks in, he sees Guru and Guru smiles seeing Goku. He reads Goku's mind and goes, oh, you used the Dragon Balls before. There's Dragon, there's, there's, there's beans on, uh, on Earth, the Guardian on Earth that has youth. He looks at Goku and he, he, he remarks that um, Na Namek is no longer safe, especially with Frieza. He sees Goku's immense potential and power. He's like, oh, but with you here, it's easy. Goku smiles and thanks him and goes, not to worry. He'll defeat this, he'll, he'll destroy this evil being and, and save your planet. And he goes, thank you. He gives Goku the Dragon Balls and he goes, do you want me to unlock your hidden potential? And Goku goes, I think I already got mine unlocked, but you can do that for my son and hopefully my other three students. And he goes, oh, I see. All right then, he unlocks Gohan's potential and um, Guru's about to tell um, Nails to go with Goku, Goku goes, no, just stay here, we won't be long, but he's almost here anyway. And so what goes down is Gohan and, and Goku stand outside. Vegeta and the men to take out all of Frieza's gang, Zabo and Doria. this is when Vegeta finds out that Frieza destroyed planet Vegeta. So they're all wiped out, all of Frieza's men get taken out. And what goes down is, is when um, Frieza appears. Now, when Frieza gets the Guru's lookout, he sees two Saiyans standing there with their tails. He goes, ho ho, two monkeys, I see. Oh, Saiyan survivors. He, he reads Goku's energy, and it shows over 5 million. Frieza doesn't even give a damn. He stands up, breaks the scout, he immediately powers up. He realizes that he's going to die if he fights a being like this. Goku, Goku allowed his key to be so strong so he can put into fear. The difference is Goku thinking that Frieza's power was only 500,000. Unfortunately, you know, Frieza powers up passes first and a second form he goes straight to a xenomorph form and then breaks it to the final form when goku sees this he's quite impressed he's like whoa you went through all those transformations just to go through that 
and Frieza just happily exclaims, Oh no, the reason why I go through these type of transformations is not because they increase my power, no. Each level were, were forms to suppress my power. This is my true form. Goku's like, interesting. Is this how strong you can become or can you become stronger? And as he says this, Goku notices the Vegeta. Vegeta comes around and spins around and kicks Frieza right in the head. And he manages to take Frieza off guard and sends him flying off his, off his, his brain chair. Goku's like, Vegeta, what was that for? And he goes, he goes, shut up, Kakarot. You may be all powerful, but I'm not going to let that bastard get away with what he did. Goku grabs his hand and goes, you'll die, Vegeta. He's so much stronger than you. Come back. Vegeta's like, Goku's like, but Kakarot, I need to. And he goes, my annoying brother and you guys insist because I won, I am the Saiyan King, right? Vegeta looks at Goku and is like, oh, oh, realizing that Vegeta has to know his place now. And Goku goes, I know how much you want to destroy him, but I was asked and tasked by this job by the elder of this world. So in turn, this is my fight, Vegeta, right? So I'll get revenge for our people, okay? And it'll be by me. Goku flies over and tells Vegeta, Go to the, um, you three, go to the Nam um, the, Nam the Namekian side where you can. Take the Dragon Balls, make the wish, and get your potentials unlocked. And Vegeta, Nappa, and Raditz are like, huh? And Raditz like, yeah, brother, whatever. He just listens. They go do exactly what they said. They get their potentials unlocked. And Vegeta's like, one, like, thank you so much to the Namekian. Two, looks at Goku, Raditz, and like, man, you guys are just awesome. And three, Vegeta gets over himself and they make the wish. Instead of making a selfish wish because he can't and all the wishes need to be made in the Mekian, Frieza's angry when he sees the, the dragon summon and he tries to go up, but Goku punches Frieza on the face, sends him flying. And Frieza's really angry now. Goku goes, your fight's not with them, it's with me. And so it goes down as one, um, Vegeta and them use the Dragon Balls to wish back everyone that was killed by Frieza's forces on Namek. And two, this is where Vegeta asks, us, asks us, am I able to use the wishing? And Nails goes, there's going to be no selfish wishing here. And he goes, no. I just want to make a wish to ask your dragon if what was said was true. Did Frieza destroy Nam um, um, planet Vegeta? And he hears this and he asks us, um, Peronga and Peronga states, yes. Yes, he did. And so what goes down is, uh, he's shocked. Um, Vegeta shocked Frieza to destroy the planet and it made Vegeta angry he just he went to this kind of false Super Saiyan anger but what goes down Goku's notice is Vegeta's um, power up it's interesting Frieza goes to punch Goku but Goku just stays, just stays there and Frieza's punch hits Goku's face without him moving him by this time Raditz and Nappa have got their potentials unlocked and all they're witnessing is Goku look like a beast compared to Frieza Frieza is shocked he jumps away and starts to use multiple death beams at Goku sending thousands of them as much as he can Goku's just standing there taking the attacks he looks at Frieza, scatters the, um, the dust away, is that all? And Vegeta's just looking at Goku, what the, is Kakarot the, the legendary Super Saiyan? Like, like, this is when he starts to realize Goku powers up, flicks his key a little bit, and Vegeta's just like shocked, like, no matter what he can do, Goku is just so much more powerful. And so when Frieza goes to max power, 120, actually no, if I remember Akira Toriyama stating that Frieza didn't fight or, um, Piccolo and waste all his time against Vegeta and all that stuff, and he was went to his full power right away. He would have had a power level of 200 million, and that would have still been stronger than Super Saiyan Goku. So, in the counts, I'm just gonna take Akira Toriyama's one for it and have Frieza go to 200 million. When Vegeta sees this, he's like, What the? Like, he can't believe it, but Goku flicks his key just a little bit and it matches Frieza's on Titan immediately. Unlike Vegeta, unlike Frieza, Goku's in his base form and standing there, he's not even powering up, he's just matching Frieza's power. And Frieza's just looking at Goku like, you're so cocky and confident, take this! He goes to throw a punch, but because Frieza's in his bulky form, he's slow as hell. And Goku just one hits Frieza in the gut. And Frieza's like, ugh, coughs out blood. And he completely collapses on the ground. He instantly fought, like forced out a... <sighs> he's like almost about to die, and Goku, Goku backhands Frieza's hand when he tries to do a death beam. And Goku grabs Frieza and throws him through multiple mountains. The Elder Kai is watching, and there's still the third wish needing to be made. What goes down is Goku lands on top of Frieza and kicks him in the ground again, slamming him down. Frieza's down, and Goku opens his hand up and goes, This is for all the Saiyans you've killed, for all the lives you've taken, Frieza. Everything. As the new, irritatingly king of the Saiyans, Frieza's like, Ugh, the new king? And he goes, I charge you with death. Goku's master has a massive beam of energy. And bear in mind, if you guys want to know why Goku has this type of attitude, he spent way more years of Kami, okay? And way more years of uh, uh, Mr. Popo. And thanks to his, his, his wish, he learns as much as he gets stronger. So he, he's 
not an ignorant fool. He knows what he needs to do. He knows that Freezer, if he never trained in his life and this is how strong he is, imagine how strong Freezer would be if he trained. And so Goku stands there without no hesitation, opens his hand up and is about to blast Freezer. But Freezer hits the ground with all his key and tries to blow up the planet. And Elder Kai sees this. And so as that happens, what goes down is Elder Kai um, instantly goes into um, uh, what's it, Nail's mind and tells Nail's to um, send a wish for everyone that's on the planet besides Freezer to Earth. And without hesitating, Poronga makes um, uh, Nails makes the wish, Poronga grants the wish. Every single person that's alive, even the Namekians that were revived, all were teleported to Earth. Okay? So I'm being teleported to Earth, the, all the Namekians are there, all everyone's there, Goku and them are there, standing there. Goku said, huh? And what happens is King Kai states that Freezer blew up Namek, he's still alive, he's injured, but Namek's being destroyed. He watched them all teleport at the same time. Goku goes, damn it! He looks over and goes, I should have killed him when I had the chance. And he goes, Goku just stands there and scrits his teeth. But what happens is the Namekians stay on Earth a little bit, okay? And this is when Guru goes up to Kame's lookout through the, let's just say, a whole year transpires, okay? Guru goes to Kame's lookout when he, when he meets Kami. Guru asks Kami if he can if he can take his power. Kami's like, but won't you want to go back? To, won't you want to make a new planet? He goes, he goes, no, not really. My um, our home is no longer safe no more. Maybe it's time for us Namekians to find a new leader, come to a new world. And Goku, and what happens is Goku's fine with it. He's quite quite surprised because I think there was only really like a hundred Namekians alive on planet Namek I believe I think that was the case here I think there was only a hundred Namekians alive on planet Namek when Goku and them came there so in turn that's how much uh, and if not I'm sorry but I'm just gonna go with that number a hundred Namekians live on earth and so what goes down is Kami once takes the responsibility and he absorbs Guru's knowledge power and becomes the new host of the other Dragon Balls which he keeps the eight Namekian Dragon Balls up in the lookout with him. He leaves the Earth Dragon Balls down below. Even though his powers increase, the limitations of the original Earth Dragon Balls will be taken away and Earth Dragon Balls will grant, be able to grant two wishes. They're still slightly weaker than Poronga because Poronga is where all the power of Kami goes to. But this will be something else also happens too. Thanks to Goku, uh, Goku Kami absorbing Guru, he was able to learn a lot and absorb, um, what's his name? Uh, Piccolo in, which in turn made Kami the Super Namekian of old. Now, and, but he won't lose his ability to become a Dragon Lord, but what goes down is the Namekians stay on Earth and Goku buys a plot of land for the Namekians to stay that is absolutely reserved that no one can go to, and protected by Capsule Corp, and so the Namekians get to live their lives peacefully on a new world, on a new island that's all their own. And the guardian that will protect them, Nails, stays, becomes the protector of the Namekians, but Goku in, in turn stays there too. And so I'm going to state that a year passes, or a year and a half passes, and Goku and them all living their lives. Vegeta lives at Capsule Corp now. Trunks is, um, well, is not conceived yet, almost though. Raditz is also living at his own own, own house with his own life. You know, he, he's actually gone to a relationship with uh, uh, Bulma's sister, Bulma's older sister, so they're still there. And Nappa's just an old man. He goes on doing whatever he wants. And so what goes down is... Everyone has everyone's so much stronger. Vegeta has unlocked Super Saiyan over this time, and so has Raditz and Nappa and Gohan. All of them have unlocked Super Saiyan. Goku smiles and looks at them and states that he does he doesn't need it. And Vegeta goes, "What do you mean, Kakarot? You don't need Super Saiyan. You can't tell me you haven't unlocked it." And Goku goes, "Oh, I've unlocked Super Saiyan a long time ago." And then shocks Vegeta. Vegeta's like, oh, "What?" And he goes, "Yeah, I've unlocked I think all forms of the natural Super Saiyan forms." And Vegeta's like, "You're lying, Kakarot." And Goku says, "No. He powers up Super Saiyan one." And, goes, and this is Super Saiyan, Vegeta just feels sick, feeling the power from Goku. Like, like he feels like he's about to throw up, just how, this is how powerful Goku is, it makes him that weak on his knees. And Goku goes, this is Super Saiyan, what you guys have, well, technically no, because this is Master Super Saiyan, Goku is Master Super Saiyan. And this is the power that you guys need to aim for. And then Goku powers up Super Saiyan 2, which scares me Vegeta, goes, this is the initial transformation of Super Saiyan 2. And then Goku shows the mastered version. And Vegeta is outright shocked. He's like, what the hell? Like, what the hell is going on? And Goku goes, now I, he goes, now the next level, what's the hardest level that I have unlocked? It took me to actually six months ago to perfect the form for me to transform without it wiping my energy out. However, now I can I, I have a mastered version where in turn Goku explodes the Super Saiyan 3. 
and Vegeta just outright collapses due to the, the difference of power. Like no one can stand for him. Raditz like he's like, yep, Kakarot is just monstrous. Goku has mastered Super Saiyan three, where his monstrous key that normally should erupt stays within his body. His body is just immensely strong and powerful, and his key just rises and rises and rises. Bear in mind, Goku still has his tail, and so he still has that power. But not yet. He doesn't. He doesn't use it. Doesn't really care about it. Doesn't really need it. Much like Kaioken. And so in turn, it goes down. As Goku powers down, Vegeta um, looks at Goku and goes, "Damn, Kakarot, what the hell?" And so they're all talking. They're all hanging out. And this is when a strange boy appears. Goku's like, Goku notices him and appears. Goes, "Who are you?" And Goku and they talk. And Goku says, "What? You're Vegeta's kid." He smiles and goes, "Wow." Goku looks over and goes to read Bulma and, he, and uses his key and he finds that Bulma's pregnant and this is when Goku's like, oh, my mom's now going to worry. Hey Vegeta, this is your son from the future, by the way. And Trump's like, but Goku, he's like, yeah, not to worry, your, your mother's pregnant with you right now. Don't need to worry about that. And Vegeta's like, oh, oh, what? I have a son from the future? What? Bulma's pregnant? Yeah, all that hits Vegeta at once and Goku's like, oh, yeah, that's right, people are not used to doing that. Chi Chi slaps Goku's head and goes, I told you to stop doing that. And he goes, like, come on, it's easy. And she smiles, even you're pregnant right now. And she's like, I'm pregnant? And Goku's like, oh, yeah. Oh, no. You're pregnant too. That means two kids. <laughs> Goku's so steep in his own head, you know, even though he's not. And so it goes down as Trunks tells him about the future he came from and all the bad that's happened. And that Freezer will be here. Goku checks his uh, our planetary warning system with the, uh, the Breeze ones. And yep, sure enough, Freezer ships almost to Earth. Goku's like, interesting. Well, how about this? I'll deal with Freezer right here and now. And... Then we'll train you up, send you back to your future, and you deal with the people there and there. And Chuck's is like, oh, uh, all right. And so what happens when Freezer's ship comes to near, near, near Earth orbit, immediately a massive beam from Vegeta blows up half of Freezer's ship. Freezer flies out with King Cold and some of his army, the Guinea forces are all there. All of them manage to survive and they're there as well and they're standing there, Freezer's Mecha Freezer. And the Guinea force go to fight and Vegeta, yeah, he just finds it funny. He goes, I'm not fighting them, I'll kill them instantly. And like, like Vegeta finds it boring. He'd rather fight Goku or Raditz instead of these fools. Nappa smiles and goes, Here's Vegeta, let me fight him. Kakarot, and Goku goes, Go have your fun. Right away, now Nappa appears. He appears right by Captain Guinea, who punches his face straight in the head, knocking Captain Guinea out, punches Raccoon, breaks his robe, slams him into the ground. Gordo tries to free, free, freeze him, but right away, um, what's it called? Nappa goes Super Saiyan and punches Gordo, knocking him out. He knocks out Chase and Birda, taking them all out. Ginyu tries to get up and uses his change ability, but Nappa turns around and blows um, um, Captain Ginyu's head off, killing him immediately. When the other four Ginyu Force members see this, that, 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 they're in shock and fear. But Raditz go, and Nappa goes, Since Kakarot taught me how to have mercy and you guys have potential, how about you four join me? And what goes down is Goku and Vegeta are like, Huh? What? And he goes, Oh no, the Ginyu Force is dead. Ginyu's dead. You'll be joining me on Earth, or you guys will die. Freezer, Freezer shoots a death beam, but Vegeta appears right in front of it, smacks it away. Vegeta powers his hand up to a Gatling gun and shoots it right at Freezer. Freezer jumps out of the way, only to be met by Raditz, kicking Freezer straight in the head, slamming him to the ground. And Freezer's shocked, and Raditz smiles. Vegeta jumps straight up and punches King Cold in the gut, grabs King Cold and folds him onto the ground, slamming him there. And then what happens is both Nappa and Nappa Nappa, Raditz and Vegeta throw King Cold and Freezer together. Into, in the middle of themselves, they both power up, Vegeta goes straight to Super Saiyan, and so does Raditz, both of them are Super Saiyan in, in each other's ways, and Vegeta powers up a massive um, Big Bang attack, and, and Raditz summons a Double Sunday, and they both, the energies collide, evaporating both King Cold and Freezer on the spot, okay? And the rest of Freezer's soldiers, they surrender immediately, and what I mean by that is Soul Bay, they're all there, all of them are there, okay, this time. They surrender immediately, and none of that stuff goes down, Nappa states that he will go. Um, he he states to Goku that he'll go and pretty much end all Freezer's rule of all the old planets, and he'll make sure. And he goes to Goku under Goku's name, of course, King Kakarot. And Goku's like, at first he doesn't like it, but he goes, you know what? It'll be a good idea. Yes, all right, Nappa. Um, Goku looks at Vegeta, but Vegeta's like, nope, I'm staying here. And go, go right at, Sorry, none of the Saiyans leave, but Nappa. Nappa puts his hand on Goku's shoulder. He goes, he'll make sure he'll do his best to fix all the mistakes of our people. And he takes the Ginyu Force and the men that are still there, and he goes off to all of Freezer's world, and he's going to spend a few years training, getting stronger, building up a force to take down all of Freezer's army that's all around, 
and try to do um, and repair all the damages that have been done over the big period of time okay and so with um, with Napa going out a lot of situations with Napa being out in space is going to change and a lot of a lot of things are going to fall into place like the heaters and granola all that stuff's going to happen early thanks to Napa being out there clearing out all the worlds that freeze are destroyed okay if you get what i mean now what happens is after freeze is destroyed Trunks begins his train with Goku and Vegeta and he gets pushed to a, an incredible power and Trunks can now stays in Master Super Saiyan with his dad and what goes down is they are sh extremely strong so it's written that yeah Trunks is super powerful and Trunks goes back to the future he kills the androids he saves his mom takes him to beans there and from there their world becomes a better place Trunks trains all the time he has a gravity chamber that has 250 times gravity healing chamber even grow sensor beans so Trunks is going to be a boss and Goku and Vegeta tells him not to stop training to have a family and to train their next generation and become stronger and stronger and stronger and, and Trunks agrees and he bows, to the, bows with them he leaves for his future and what goes down is um, well Cell wakens up and he, he, he starts to travel around the world and he, he thinks he's slick but unfortunately for him he's dealing with a, a guru powered Kami that has Piccolo's powers, um, so he's, he's super namic, um elder guru Kami, so he's super strong. He sees exactly where Sal is and what he's doing, and immediately, without any hesitating, he warns Goku and them. Goku uh, heads over and, and finds Cell, and he gives Cell a choice, but Cell doesn't take it, so Goku opens his hand and, ignite, and annihilates all of Cell. Cell gets wiped out. Goku unintentionally destroys the time machine that Cell come into as well, so there's Cell gone. And I'm gonna do a seven year time skip, okay? In that seven years, Gohan has mastered Super Saiyan 1 and Super Saiyan 2. Both Goten and Trunks have mastered Super Saiyan 1. <clears throat> Both Vegeta and Raditz have mastered Super Saiyan 3. Okay, well not mastered, they have access to Super Saiyan 3. They can't master it due to the fact that it takes a lot out of their bodies. But hey, they have become strong. There's none of this animosity between the Saiyans at all. And Vegeta and Raditz know that Goku's kids are the strongest. Both Goten and Gohan are by far the strongest people. <clears throat> Out of all the kids next generation vegeta's a monster nonetheless he's he's unfortunately gained the second rank compared to uh, both raditz and gohan and so at this time when it comes to the tournament they just go for the sake of it you know because gohan's girlfriend's there videl bear in mind gohan still has videl as his girlfriend and go to the trunks went and go to the trunks went into the tournament so they allow that to happen the kids tournament happens and go to him once go to him once and he knocks out um, Hercule in a shameful manner where Her Hercule can't even state that he lost. Gohan wins the tournament, he beats Hercule. When um, the Supreme Kai comes and talks to Goku, he explains everything, but Goku goes um, not to take Gohan's key because then if that beam can absorb energy, then Gohan's energy will probably fill it up, right? And so what goes down is, um, um, I'm just gonna say they, they take Gohan's key anyway because the plot needs to work. So they take a little bit of Gohan's key, Gohan flexes enough, but what happens, they take his key, they head to uh, when, um, where Barbody is, and they follow them, follow them really fast, you know, and get there. When Barbody grabs the device, Goku appears in the middle of them, you know, because it's a responsibility. He immediately, without even hesitating, because this is a Goku that doesn't hesitate, because he has his head on Namek, and Namek was destroyed because of him, and he doesn't want it to happen to Earth. Goku appears right in front of Barbody, he, he instantly taps Barbody, puts key through Barbody, killing him immediately. And in doing so, um, as this happens, Deborah, Yakon, Poi Poi, all the people that have margins marks on the head disappears, and for the first time, they're all free. At first, Deborah is angry that he sees the Supreme Kai, but he states that he wasn't here by his choice; he was taking control of. Supreme Kai senses how, reads his mind and, re and realizes that he's okay, and tells Deborah to go back to the Demon Realm, or he'll die on the spot. Deborah, without even hesitating, he leaves. Yakon, Poi Poi, and all of them they. Um, they say the same thing and so they get sent back to their own realms in a sense as well now um, the, they, they find Margin Buu's egg and they pretty much seal it away permanently destroy Barbity's ship and from there the Buu saga is ended and so a year and a half of training goes by bear in mind Goku is trained non-stop all the time he always trains by himself if he can't train with Vegeta and them and Goku pushes himself to extremes bear in mind he doesn't have um, uh, what's it called instant transmission yet nor does he have any spiritual control yet until one day um, What goes down before Tarbo comes back to earth? Nappa appears right in front of Goku and goes Kakarot and Goku's like oh damn Nappa how the hell did you do that? And he goes I've, I've been to Yardred 
It was one of the last planets for Easter's planet, um, I mean, almost destroyed, and I've learned something incredible. I believe this will be perfect for you. Sire so, goes one. Uh, just gotta accept you guys called him with that, and two, very well. He goes, oh, the good training, and he tells Goku about the training. Goku reads Nappa's mind and sees how incredible the training was. And so he lets Chi Chi know that he's gonna be gone for a bit. Chi Chi, she's fine with it, she's happy with her husband, he, he fulfills her in every way. And so Goku leaves leaves Earth, but this time he does not leave alone, he's leaving with Raditz and Vegeta. They disappear, six months of training goes by, Goku has mastered all of, all of, um, um, what's it called, all of the spiritual control. Vegeta and Nappa are still going, Vegeta and Raditz are still going on. It took Nappa years to master this um, instant transmission, you know, but he still mastered it and he uses it to go around. He gives Goku updates that he's been working with the Galactic Patrol to, to um, help take out all of Frieza's armies and all of Frieza's remnants. He even um, arrested two of Frieza, or taken into two of Frieza's confidants, Avalon and Kari, and found Vegeta's little brother, Tabu. And Vegeta's like, Tabu? Where? Gives Vegeta the address where Tabu is and states that Tabu will come visit you. And my opinion is Avalon and Kari I've worked with. Um, see, Nappa's got a massive force, but they work for Goku and for Nappa. Well, you get what I mean. They're Goku's forces. But what goes down is after that interaction, Nappa goes, Well, I'm out. I've got things to do. And Goku thanks Nappa and tells him he's doing a good job. Nappa th tells Goku, Thank you for giving me this chance, Kakarot. I appreciate this. I got so much redeeming to be done. I've learned a lot from you, Kakarot. Vegeta goes over and, and sees Nappa, you know, and th thanks Nappa for even doing this. He goes, he did a good job there, Nappa. And he, Nappa smiles at Vegeta, and Vegeta finally says, thank you for everything you've done. Nappa kind of slightly gets emotional, because, you know, because Nappa's been looking after these two kids for years, since they were kids, both Vegeta and Raditz. And even Raditz says the same too. And so Nappa thanks them, they all, all three of them fist bumps their equals. Nappa goes off back to his mission. Vegeta, Goku, and um, Raditz all, after their training, head back to Earth. And this is when it comes into the situation where Beerus comes to Earth, okay? Now when Beerus wakes up, bear in mind, the Elder Kai hasn't been pulled from a sword yet, okay? When Beerus wakes up, this is where all the things change. One, um, Supreme Kai is kind of nervous about Lord Beerus because he remembers how Lord Beerus used to be. 30 years, he just destroys, does whatever he wants. And he's nervous for Earth, but at the same time, he believes that he is someone that could possibly fight Beerus. He's unsure where Goku's actual limits are because Goku just keeps surprising him and surprising him. At this time, um, while Beerus has come, I'm saying it took six months before Beerus woke up, Goku has finally met King Kai because Goku has instant transmission now. He's met King Kai, he's met King Yama, he's met all the other Cardinal Kais, and from there, Goku learned Kaioken and the Spirit Bomb, which in turn he taught Goku, Vegeta and Raditz. Vegeta don't care about Kaioken, but he likes the Spirit Bomb. Raditz don't care about Kaioken, but he likes the spirit bomb. But Goku's like, well, I'll teach my human friends. He teaches Krillin, and Krillin has becomes the new Kaioken teacher of Earth. So that's what he does. He's still relevant, not really, but yeah. The human, don't worry, that the humans have become strong, like really, really strong. And plus, Nappa's forces are strong as hell too. So when Beerus wakes up, he comes to Earth. He finds out that one, Goku has killed Frieza. Two, Goku is the strongest Saiyan and the new king of all Saiyans. And three, he lives on Earth with the other Saiyans. So Beerus comes to Earth until Bama's birthday. Bear in mind, King Kai and Supreme Kai tell Goku about Lord Beerus, and Goku's still cocky and wants to fight him. However, Goku's not on King Kai's world, he's on Earth. So when King Kai, um, when Beerus comes there, Vegeta tells Goku how powerful he is, blah blah blah, and the Battle of God tournaments begin. First, Goku finds out that there's a Super Saiyan God and it takes six people to pretty much make it. So in turn, there's Goku, Vegeta, uh, Nappa, Tabu, Goten, Gohan. And Goku, there's, there's actually eight scenes in that round. Bear in mind, it took a while, but Vegeta and Nappa and Raditz are good people now. They're not bad, they put their lives on life for others now. Much like in canon Vegeta. So in turn, what goes down is Beerus comes to Earth, he enjoys his food. Goku is hosp ho hospitable to him, like in like how he should be. Until Beerus wants the Super Saiyan God. Goku states he doesn't know what the Super Saiyan God um, legend is, even though he's done a lot of research. But he could ask the Dragon Balls. He can not shin on, but this is when um, Freezer's lackey, first lackey comes in, the one at um He tells um, Lord, uh, uh, Goku that um, he's also heard of the legends as well. Freezer went around planet Vegeta looking for the answer, but couldn't get it. So Goku goes, oh, okay, so it is true. So Goku asks shin and shin states the same, same thing. Five pure-hearted Saiyans pu pulling their power into the sixth Saiyan, which is Goku. 
to make him the Super Saiyan God to fight Beerus and say what goes down is Goku goes, before he makes the Super Saiyan God, can you fight him in this form first? And Beerus like, this weakened form, Goku powers up to full power. And Beerus opens his eyes and Vegeta, Raditz, everyone that like, sense energy are like, what the hell? And this is Goku's base form. Beerus gets up, puts his drink down and goes, you know what? I think you'll be fun. Alright then, Saiyan. Goku and Beerus begin the fight and Goku realizes immediately that Beerus is so much stronger than him. In every way possible. For now. But... It's that wish that Goku made, you know? That little wish that Goku makes that ma is giving me the confidence that Goku will take Beerus. But anyway, it's at base form, Goku is nothing. Until Goku goes Super Saiyan, this blows Beerus' mind. Goku manages to throw a couple of punches and catch Beerus off guard. Beerus like, what the hell? You become this strong? Bear in mind, Super Saiyan is a 50 times multiplier. And so when he goes to Super Saiyan, he he's putting up a decent fight with Beerus, which is actually making Beerus actually have to use true power. Until Goku goes Super Saiyan 2, knowing that he's not doing nothing. When he goes Super Saiyan 2, this blows Beerus' mind. He begins to have so much fun with Goku, and Goku in turn has the same fun as well. Until the last one, when Beerus overpowers Goku again, this is when Goku starts to have it and he goes, Well, Lord Beerus, you're the only one truly that has pushed me beyond Super Saiyan, Super Saiyan 1 and 2. But let's see what you do against this. Goku power closes his eyes and he begins to yell for a whole three episodes of Dragon Ball. <laughs> And when he powers up to Super Saiyan 3, this is where things dramatically change. Beerus is impressed. He looks at Goku and goes, This is the power. This may not be dead, your god key, but this is it, Whis. This is the power I've dreamed of from a mortal. Beerus powers up, exciting. Goku goes 100% Super Saiyan 3. Vegeta's like, just speechless. Raditz, Nappa are just speechless. Speechless. And Whis is like, this is fun. I'm enjoying this. What is this food again? <laughs> this is sushi. <laughs> he begins to eat sushi. He doesn't care about Beerus and his fights. But he likes Goku. He sees potential in Goku. And Goku battles Beerus. And Beerus is having the time of his life. He can't believe that a mortal without God Key is pushing him this far. Bear in mind, Goku's been training for years with Super Saiyan 3. And he has, a, he has the ability to get stronger no matter how much he trains. Goku's stronger than Super Saiyan God, guys. I'm just going to state that right now. Super Saiyan God is nothing but a Kakaduki transformation at this present time. Until Goku adds God Key. But as Beerus and Goku begin the battle, Beerus notices that Goku, despite him getting injured, his healing and his stamina is coming back and he's getting stronger and stronger. Beerus likes this and he begins to say, well, How strong can you get, Saiyan? Give me more! Beerus and Goku begin to battle non-stop, and they, they battle lasts for an hour or so, which shocks um, Beerus in itself. Beerus manages to land a clean hit on Goku, and he gets a good space. And when Beerus looks at Goku, Goku's injury that he just sustained started to heal again, and he gets stronger and stronger. Goku begins to get stronger and stronger, and Beerus likes this, and he goes, <laughs> You know what? You're not half bad. I'll be pretty scared to see what you'll be come with you become a Super Saiyan God. Goku's like, I'm impressed, Lord Beerus. Thank you. You've actually continuously made me stronger and stronger. I can't believe this. Can we continue? And Beerus goes, <laughs> as much as I would like to, Goku. But um, I don't have all day, in fact. And Goku goes, oh, damn. Can we fight again next time, Lord Beerus? And Beerus goes, hell yeah, Goku. But before I go, can you can you do the ritual? I just want to see the Super Saiyan God. I don't care if that power is nothing, you know. You satisfied me, Goku. Goku's like, good, good. Because despite me getting stronger and everything, I'm kind of tired. You're something else, Lord Beerus. Can I state how sh how much were you actually going all out on me? And he goes, that's for God of Destruction to know, and for a mortal to eventually find out. Goku's like, damn! Beerus smiles at both Goku and Beerus fly down to Earth. And Vegeta goes, so? Who won, Kakarot? Who won? And he goes, oh, well, it wasn't much of a win. Both me and Lord Beerus come to the conclusion that our, our battle is getting more and more violent to the point where things are getting destroyed. So, we want to save it for another time. And Vegeta's like, ha, damn you, Kakarot, you just continue to surprise me all the time. And Goku's like, no, don't worry, Vegeta. But anyway, so how does it go, Lord Beerus? And so, Whis explains how the ritual. And so, what goes down is Vegeta, Nappa, Raditz, Gohan, um, what's it called? Tabo, because Tabo's there. They all put their hands together, put them on Goku's back, and they begin to give good energy. Goku begins to glow blue for a brief moment. Everyone goes Super Saiyan, even Tarbo, briefly, even though he's not a Super Saiyan. Because if Adele could go Super Saiyan in anime, yeah, Tarbo being a Saiyan can as well. And so when all the hairs glow and all the energy goes into Goku, Beerus sweats and Goku's God Key activates. He's like, damn! Beerus is just shocked. And Vegeta sees this. He's like, that power is that strong, but we don't sense nothing. Just this 
huge pressure like as if Goku and then Vegeta realizes Kakarot has become a god. Just like how Beerus feels. And Goku stands in front of Beerus, Beerus is like, I am really impressed saying, I can't believe that your, your people, your species can become this strong. <laughs> Tell you what, you train for the next three years with this power with my uh, with my um, attendant here, Goku, and from there you become as strong as you can. And he bows to go. He he nods to Goku. You'll give me the fight of my life. I'm looking forward to it. You hear me saying? Goku puts his hand up and fist bumps Beerus. Beerus and goes, "Yeah, I will." And Beerus goes, "Well, I enjoyed all your food." Goku goes, "Oh, before you go, since you liked all the food, I had one of my uh, one of my uh, people um, look this up for you." And the person chucks it to Bulma. Bulma gives it to Little Beerus and he goes, What's this? And he goes, It's a capsule. All the food you ate here. I found that you were God of Destruction, so I want to make sure that I could appease the God, you know? Beerus looks at Bulma with like a little tear and he goes, You telling me that all this food exists in this capsule? He goes, Yes, I wouldn't lie to you, Lord Beerus. And then this is when we, we state, Yes, Lord Beerus, that's a capsule that holds all the blah blah blah. And so what goes down is Beerus th thanks her and tells him that. He'll be back to Earth again, and he tells Goku, see you in three years, Goku. Goku fist bumps and goes, what about you, Whis? When will I? And he goes, you'll see me tomorrow. And Goku says, oh, very well. And so they leave, Vegeta goes, to hell are you going to leave me out of this training, Kakarot? I'm coming too. All in the debate, he goes, yeah, 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 come on. We will go, we will go. Nappa goes, well, I'd love to stay and chat, Kakarot, but i got things to do. i got a job now. And Goku goes, no, nah, I'm, I'm grateful that you came here, Nappa. You go and do your job. Thank you so much, he goes. Hey, before I leave Kakarot, there's one thing I want to ask you. He goes, yes, and he goes, Yonamiki and has both sets of Dragon Balls on this world, right? And he goes, yes. And he goes, interesting. I found a world that also has a Namiki, and I've been watching from a distance now. And he goes, oh? A world? And he goes, yes. Um, he is a Namiki, and he definitely is. One of my scouts, he has a Dragon Ball. And he goes, Goku's like, I see. Well, keep keep an eye on him. He goes, I will go, I will Kakarot. Anyway, Kakarot, but the actual true thing I wanted to ask you is, I want to use the Dragon Balls if I can, and it's going to be a selfish wish. And Goku's like, what kind of wish? And he goes, I want to revive all the Saiyans that were killed by Frieza. And he goes, what do you mean planet for Vegeta? And he goes, I was going to do that, however, I, don't wanna, I do not want to revive the entire planet. There wasn't much Saiyans on our planet in the first place. There was like 10,000 of us at max. Much like how the Namekians were, we fought ourselves down to almost extinction. Goku hears this, he goes, oh, I see. And what goes down is, um, I'll leave it to you, Kakarot, but that's my dream. I want to see the Saiyan race rebuilt in your image, Kakarot. You, you change me. And I believe that you can change our people. And Goku's like, all right, Nappa. Well, I'll see you later. And Nappa goes, thank you, Goku. Thank you, Kakarot. He flies, that does a thing. So does Tabum. And so what goes down is they enjoy Bomber's birthday, and the next day comes up. Whis appears at Goku's place. Vegeta is not having any instant transmission to Goku's place. Raditz did the same. They already said goodbye to their wives. And what goes down is both Goku, Vegeta, and Nappa, uh, Raditz I mean, all leave to Beerus' world. Bear in mind, Goku's body adapted to the God Key without even needing the trainer. And so his body naturally radiated to himself. He can go into Super Saiyan God now, but he needs to learn how to control it, okay? And you guys will be thinking, but Dr. Kahu took Vegeta and Goku years to gain this ability. This, it took them a while, however, Goku has the ability to learn the ability to gain strength fast, rapidly, rapidly, past Beta's limits. And so, if the canon Goku was able to absorb some of the God Key within his body, his base form, what do you think this Goku is going to do? He's going to absorb the entire God Key into his base form. So his base form is as strong as the Super Saiyan God form. Well... His original Super Saiyan God form that he took on before Beerus was going to attack him, while Beerus left. So in turn, Goku is that strong. And I'm going to state that they, um, because all of Frieza's forces have been taken out, taken out or been, been re-recruited under Goku uh, slash Nappa's regiments, um, there's no one that's going to revive Frieza back. Frieza stays dead. Okay guys, just, just letting you know. So Goku and Vegeta and them all have unedited training all the way up to the God of Destruction arc, okay? And why I say that is because the God of Destruction arc, uh, um, yeah, the, the, the Destroyer arc tournament is still going to happen, but it's going to happen a little bit later, okay? Now, by this time, Vegeta, Goku, and Raditz are still training, where Beerus comes to the, um, or Beerus, Chumba comes to Beerus as well. All the stuff's going to go the same, but there's three Saiyans. However, Goku is just something else, something else entirely. 
He's been told by Whis to train only in a Super Saiyan God form and to, re and to remain in that form at all times. And Goku's like, oh, okay. Because Whis is going to push Goku to learn and master Master Ultra Instinct. Whis knows all of Goku's stories. And he knows that out of everyone that can master Ultra Instinct to the point where it's perfect and he, he's like, Whis, it's Goku. And so what goes down is Goku trains all the time with Beerus and Whis, you know? And Vegeta's just he's shocked. By the time Beerus wakes up and sees everything, he doesn't wake up in the same anger as he did before because Goku, he, well, he's happy, but he comes out and he sees Champa, and they have the same tournament with the eggs and the food and everything like that, but, and the tournament still gets suggested, and so everything's going to go about roughly the same all the way up to the tournament power. Now, Goku doesn't need to train, but he, he enjoys it. He has the freedom to, a tra to train, you know? And so the people that are going to be in the tournament power... And bear in mind, Nappa is really strong, okay? When I mean strong, he is really strong. No human comes close to him. The only, ones, the only humans that are stronger than him are half-breed humans like Trunks, Goten, you know, and Gohan. And um, um, Raditz's son, Bardock. So those, those ones are the only ones that are stronger than Nappa by hum human standards, you know? But what goes down is, in the tournament itself, it's Nappa first, um, what's it called? Gohan second, Raditz third, Jeta fourth, Goku fifth. And so, yeah, because there's one, two, three, four, yeah, all five. So, what goes down is the tournament's quite simple. Raditz easily throws out Botamo out and he fights the, um, he fights Frost. And because of Rad uh, Nappa's own anger, he beats up Frost badly. Frost triggers him and, and Nappa takes out Frost badly. When he knocks Frost out, he still gets poisoned and he falls out of the ring. And so that leaves Gohan. Gohan fights uh, uh, Megera. Megera fights him and it gets drawn to a standstill until Gohan, Gohan doesn't learn to insult Megera. Instead, the uh, the heat in the um, the, well, the cube that Vidal put, puts around him drains all of Gohan's energy out. And so before Gohan uh, is about to lose, he goes straight to Master Super Saiyan 2 and pushes Super Saiyan 3, activates it entirely, rushes at Megera, grabs him and tackles him. And Gohan's like, Fall out of the ring, you damn stupid metal man! And as Gohan punches uh, Megera, he, 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 he begins to cry. But what goes down is uh, both Gohan and Megera fall out of their ring just by plot. Okay, just by plot. And it goes, uh, um, um, what's it called? After that, it becomes, um, so it was Botamo, Frost, Megera. Oh, and then Kaba. When Kaba comes in, it's Raditz versus Kaba. And it's a pretty interesting one. Veg um, Vegeta even tells Raditz, keep pushing them. He has the potential to become strong. If this is his base, he's incredible. And um, they fight and fight and fight until um, what's it called? Red shows Tarbo Super Saiyan, and he pushes Tarbo to the point, but not the same way Vegeta did. No, no. Red pushes him in a manner to make him. He's already there. Just push it, feel the feel the power behind the neck, let the tingle rise. <laughs> and just like that, he turns Super Saiyan. Once he turns Super Saiyan, immediately Red goes from Super Saiyan to Super Saiyan Blue, punches Tarbo in the guts like how Vegeta does, and tells him to remember this form. Tarbo's out and it comes to hit. Hit's not hit's not nice, okay? He takes out um, Raditz pretty fast. He realized that Raditz is extremely strong and he can't waste his time. So he takes out Raditz really fast, hitting him in vital areas quickly. The moment the match starts, when Raditz collapses, only Goku saw what, um, what, what um, Hit did. Goku tells Vegeta that he has to anticipate all of Hit's moves. If he doesn't, Hit's going to catch him off guard. Vegeta looks at Goku and he goes, I saw nothing. And he goes, exactly, you saw nothing, Vegeta. Vegeta is shocked at Goku and he goes, very well. Vegeta lands in the ring, he instantly goes Super Saiyan God, and he begins to feel out hit when the tournament and when the fight begins, Hit tries to do the same thing, but Vegeta anticipates a couple of attacks and goes straight to blue and fights um, Hit equally for a bit. And they fight and fight and fight, but unfortunately for Vegeta, Hit takes Vegeta out as well. Not because Hit's strong in it, but because of his hack ability. And so it goes down is when it comes to Goku. Goku comes into the arena, he's, still, he's always been in the Super Saiyan God form, he hasn't turned, turned it off. We told Goku to stay in that form all the time, so he can train and become stronger and stronger. And so when Goku stands there, hit, um, the tournament begins, Hit rushes at Goku and throws a punch, but Goku catches it. Hit's like, how did you? Hit begins to push himself more and more and more, um, time skipping everywhere and everywhere, but Goku's just catching those attacks like it's nothing. And Hit's like, how are you doing this? Goku goes, you may be faster than them. But to me, you may as be you may be as still as an ant. And he's like, how dare you? He powers up. He goes, the only reason why I can't stop you is I'm not allowed to use my full power in this tournament. Goku looks at Beerus. 
Spirit smiles. Oh, you want him to use his full power, meaning you want killing to happen, Goku? Goku's like, mm-hmm. And goes, all right then, Goku. If he doesn't, if hit doesn't satisfy my curiosity, I want you to kill him. Goku's like, all right. And Ch Champa's like, what the hell, Beerus? And he goes, what? He, if he kills Goku, then he wins. Same, same. And Champa's like, yeah. Well, Hit, you got permission. Kill him. Hit immediately goes full power and starts to punch dimensional attacks. And when Goku sees this, he starts to focus as he begins to block out everything. And Whis tells Goku to close his eyes and just dodge the attacks using, using his feelings. And for a period of time, Goku's dodging them good until he gets hit once. And then Goku realizes that he's becoming too lax, but he needs to push himself to that point like we said. And Goku pushes himself, pushing himself to the point where Hit's getting tired. Goku's only taking a defensive stance but blocking it with his eyes closed. And, and Champ is shocked and Hit's kind of feels offended that Goku's not even taking him seriously. Until Goku appears and knees Hit in the chest. And he goes, oh, I'm, oh, I'm taking you seriously, alright? If I wasn't, you would have killed me long ago. And Goku headbutts Hit in the head. And he goes, the only difference is I don't need a power up to, to a power up like them to become a sh strong enough to take you out. Goku grabs Hit's head and slams onto the ground and, and kicks him across. And Goku goes, how many people have you killed? Using that ability, because you're the greatest, greatest assassin in your world, right? Hit looks at Goku. Goku kicks Hit again in the head. Hit, Hit is just struggling. He's looking at Goku. Goku slams his foot right to Hit's face. And Goku goes, "I can kill you. You know that? You want to fight at full power? Where's your full power? You're nothing." Goku grabs Hit's foot, foot, and slams him into the ground. One thing Goku hates is he hates, well, the intentional killing. Like he hates this type of stuff, like Frieza. Like Hit kind of has that situation where he kind of reminds him of Frieza in that sense. Hit tries to get up, but Goku kicks Hit right into Champa's photo. And then smashes Hit straight to the ground, destroying the entire arena. And as Hit's on the ground, Goku's standing over, uh, standing over him on the air. So, Goku opens his hands. Do you want to die the same way every other person um, has died in your universe from you? Or do you want to live a life and try to figure something else besides being an assassin? Why don't you use your abilities to help people? It's up to you. But you have five seconds to tell me. Goku opens his hand up. A massive blue aura appears on his hands. Everyone's watching Goku like, whoa. Hit goes, I want to live. And he goes like, good. It'll be, a waste of, it'll be a waste to kill you. Goku goes, well, I will ask my god of destruction and angel if they can keep me updated with your progress. But this is the pledge I make to you. I'm letting you live your life. Change your damn life. Goku turns away and flies up by um, Beerus. Beerus smiles right at Champa. Well now, brother, I won. That means my universe is better than yours. And Champa is so angry. And so all the situation goes and plays the same. Zeno comes, Goku meets Zeno, he asks for a tournament, all that stuff, yada yada, goes the same. And then we move on to the Goku Black arc. Now, Goku Black is still a thing. It's still a thing. Trunks still comes back to the future and he still tries to attack Goku. But Goku catches his hand. But what goes down is when Goku Black comes back, Goku already read Trunks' mind. And he didn't hesitate. If he had the same potential as Goku, he is not going to waste his time. So without him hesitating, Goku erupts to a full power Super Saiyan God, Super Saiyan Blue. And flies right in front of Goku Black, places his hand in front of him and goes, I have no time for you to adapt to me. Grabs his, grabs his hand and rips the time ring off his hands, knowing that this is a special thing. And it completely obliterates... Actually, no, he leaves the time ring there, but he completely... Bloodrates Goku Black right then and there without even hesitating. When Vegeta and see this, like, what the hell? Trunks is like, Goku. And what happens is the remains of Goku Black just falls to the ground. He's gone. There's no Goku Black. The, the, the portal closes. And Goku goes, well, that's done. Trunks goes back to his future. Just if, um, Goku goes back to, and he, he he goes to try to help out. This is when Zamasu comes. The other he goes, I don't know where Goku Black is what black is but i'm here to end it he goes to fight goku but goku owns him and because goku is a genius he always keeps a mafu bar chamber with him just in case he needs to keep someone that's powerful in prison he actually wanted to see if it would work on Mulberus, you know but he got another god and when he fights the, this immortal god he realizes that hey, this guy can't be killed hey oh well he puts down the um he puts down the um the vial or the little vase or the little jar he has and when he sees this, Goku does a Mafu bar and completely seals Zamasu, taking Zamasu to the future. What goes down, he gives it to Beerus, where Beerus just goes, Immortal, huh? And he grabs the sword, uh, 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 another Z sword, and seals the bean inside the seal Z sword. That's Zamasu. And when um, when Supreme Kai sees this, he goes, another Z sword? But I thought that was legend. Beerus laughs and goes, no. And that stupid old Kai's in that damn sword. He's going to try to challenge my power, that fool. And he's my insurance policy if you die. 
Then I'll just break their sword and bring out another Supreme Kai, you idiots. And what goes down is Beerus goes, maybe it's time for him to release him. So Beerus releases the Supreme Kai, the, the Elder Kai, and re puts the Master Sword in that same place. Elder Kai is angry, but he can't say nothing. You know? And so what goes down is, when it comes closer towards um, near the Tournament of Power, this is when a Nappa comes back. Nappa's ship lands on Earth. When he lands on Earth, this is when he comes out with Paragus and Broly. And Chilai and their old fella. And his entire force, the Guinea force, besides Captain Guinea's gone, it's called the, um, the Saiyan force. Even from that, his entire army has come, you know, but not an army to take over this army. He brings them there to meet their king, Goku, because Goku is their king. They all bow to Goku. Goku says, it's enough, enough. Everyone, he, you can get up now. And Nappa smiles. He has his head down still, making sure that he, he lets Goku know that he's the new royalty of the Saiyans. Live with it. And so what goes down is Goku meets Paragus and Broly. And when Goku looks at Broly, he goes, you're powerful. And he goes, hmm? Goku immediately takes the collar off his neck and goes, what are you doing? This will keep Nappa, this will keep us safe from. Um, Nappa places his hand on Paragus' his shoulder and goes, he goes, Jedrum, listen, things have changed. Kakarot is the legendary Super Saiyan. None of us are more powerful than he is. And he's a shot. Uh. And he goes, yes, your son is powerful. He may be the other legendary Super Saiyan, another type, but Kakarot is just on another level. And Goku, uh, Goku wants to challenge Broly, and they have a mean battle to the point where Broly starts to lose control. And Goku realizes that Broly's ability keeps getting stronger and stronger, and he's using that form. Goku's interested, and so in his, in his base Super Saiyan God form, Goku's eyes turn into the Ikari state, with his Super Saiyan God form being a little bit altered, okay? A little bit um, irregularly altered, but it's ten times more powerful, and Goku's like, wow. So this is what you're using, but you're in a different sense. How incredible. You don't even have your tail and this is fun. Goku begins to fight Broly, but over a period of time, it's just made very clear that Broly can't keep up with Goku. And Goku just pits Broly in the gut and knocks him out entirely. And Goku hot puts him down and goes, to be honest, if this guy was to continue fighting, he'll be my 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 match. He'll be me and him would be he'll be my rival in a sense. Vegeta hears this and he realizes that one, Kakarot is not the only legendary Super Saiyan. This other Broly guy is one too. And Vegeta's like, damn! He's powerful. And so it goes down as they all still begin to train until the tournament of power begins, okay? Now, why the tournament of power begins is because, well, this still is going to happen the same way. The, fu uh, the future Xeno didn't come back, so Xeno still remembers. And so there's none of that Zen exhibition match with um, Universe um, 11 or Universe 9. So none of that goes down, but what goes down is all the gods of, of destruction and creation go to meet Xeno and they talk about the tournament. And everyone should get ready. Everyone gets their forces ready. No one knows that Goku had a hand in getting this tournament started, and no one knows, understands. But the other four universes set out. Now, when the tournament power begins, all the universe, um, all the universe seven fighters had their unique or their their potential unlocked. Because when Goku and them heard about, well, when Beerus found out that the Supreme Kai could, our Elder Kai can release everyone's head of potential, he goes to everyone. He gets everyone's potential unlocked. Well, I mean, everyone from Goku to Broly, and so the 10 people that are going to be entering this battle, and it's going to be mostly Saiyans, is Goku, Vegeta, Raditz, Nappa, Broly, now I, I would say Paragus, but um, yeah, I would say Paragus, now Gohan does as well, so that's seven, that's seven Saiyans fighting, or well, six Saiyans and one half-breed, but that's, and then what happens is, we're going to add in, um, I would say go to the chunks, but no, they're, they're too immature, and um, just for argument's sake, uh, Tabu, he's not strong enough, unfortunately. He's a little bit too weak as well. But I'm going to state that Master Roshi, due to experience, you know, Nails, because Nails, I'm going to tell you right now, Nails has not been slacking, he's been strong, he gets strong, he's been training in, you know. And, hmm, this is Krillin, represents humans. So those are the um, 10 that go into the tournament of battle. Tournament of battle, tournament of power, oh my goodness. When they get there, when everyone gets to the Tournament of Power, um, Universe 7 and Universe 11 are the last ones to arrive. Um, what's it called? When they get there, they're standing there, Goku appears and everyone looks at them. They can sense all, Vegeta, all everyone else's presence by Goku's. And when Goku's just looking at Vegeta and then this is when Universe 11 appears and Goku them sense their key. And when Goku looks at me and he looks at the two strongest, that is Toppo and Jiren. Both Goku and Jiren make eye contact with each other. Jiren doesn't take his eyes off Goku and Goku does the same with him. Topo is quite impressed that another a, a human over well, a human over there can use God Key in a sense, 
And so when the Tournament of Power begins, everyone off goes off in the same thing, you know, everyone does the same, alright? Vegeta goes to have his fun, Raditz has his fun, Nappa has his fun, Broly, now he has his fun. Now, when it comes to the subject of Broly, I'm gonna state that Goku took him into the room of Spirit and Time to gain control of his power, much like how um, Kale did, okay? But in a, in a different sense, because Broly is way more stronger and monstrous. So Broly has his Super Saiyan form, he, he has access to it, and he has under control thanks to Goku. Now, if you're wondering how strong Goku is, he's stronger than Super Saiyan Blue Gogeta at this present time, and this is just him, okay? He's always in Super Saiyan God form, not because he's gonna he's permanently stuck in it. No, Whis told him for Goku's training to manipulate his God Key to build it up better and stronger, to stay in the form. And Goku, he's genius. He's, his power allows him to do so. And so the, the, the Tournament of Power is a massive whitewash, you know? Um, Master Roshi shines, Krillin shines for a brief moment. You know, Nails does good, fights the Namekians, go on, stays in, he t fights them as well. And the ones that pretty much survive, like Amazon State, all the way to the end, all the universe, uh, are out by Universe 11 and Universe 7. The ones that are left from Universe 11 are Topo, um, Jiren, and Dispo. The ones that are left from Universe 7 is Goku, Broly, Vegeta, Raditz, and Gohan. So those five, everyone else is gone. Everyone else is gone. And as they look on, Goku stays out of it. And Dispo goes into his light speed form and he goes to attack. And this has been Raditz and um, what's it called? Raditz and uh, what's his name? Gohan go and fight Dispo. And the reason why I didn't say Kale stays in the fight because Kale would have lost rage, you know. And Broly would have fought her and brought her back into a position to control herself. Kefla would have been jealous, but she would have been taken out easy as by Gohan. And then Goku would have gone. Um, Broly and, and Kale would have had an extreme battle till Broly takes her out easy as hell. So she loses. That's why I didn't bring it up. But anyway, after Dispo uh, goes and takes Gohan and Raditz on, this is when Vegeta and Vegeta goes to take on Topo, you know? He wants to take on Jiren, but uh, what's it called? Goku tells Vegeta to take on Topo. And so Vegeta goes on and Topo gets rid of his, his notions and becomes the God Destruction version. And so they begin the clash and Vegeta unlocks Evolutionary Blue and becomes way stronger and takes out Topo with less damage this time. And he walks out there, fight easy. Gohan gets taken out with Dispo this time. Raditz takes him out and so what happens is the last three Saiyans, Goku, Raditz and Broly versus Jiren. Now Jiren stands and smiles and what happens? he rushes in but Broly rushes in. And Broly and, and, and Jiren's battle is immense. Goku sits there and just watches on. Beerus is like, hey Goku, what are you doing? Goku's like, I just want to have some fun and watch. It's kind of boring if I fight, don't you think, Lord Beerus? And Lord Beerus is like, yeah, true. That is actually true. And he goes, well, be ready, just in case he loses, you know? You get me caught off guard. And Goku's like, fair enough, I'll, I'll, I got a trick up my sleeve. Me and me have been training for a while. I got a trick, don't worry. And Beerus is like, yeah, yeah, don't worry, fine. Goku goes, why don't you just eat that capsule of food you have there? And Beerus goes, oh, yeah. He opens it up and he offers the food to other gods, even though he doesn't. it's not normal for him, it's just so he can keep um, appearing to Lord Zeno. He even gives Zeno some food, which he likes it, and so Beerus is ha happy. And so what goes down is, as Broly fights him, Broly realizes that he can't scratch him, so he goes into a Super Saiyan form. And this takes Jiren by surprise, and he begins to battle. And once Broly goes to his maximum potential, this is where Broly goes to his 100%. Broly and Jiren both go 100%, but unfortunately for Broly, thanks to Jiren's sheer will and his monstrous will alone, he managed to take Broly out and gain the win. Broly falls out, and Goku's like, nicely done, Bro um, Broly. Vegeta stands back, he's not, he's not gonna stay back and let Broly have all the fun. He goes to fight um, um, Jiren, and much like how Broly lost, Jiren was impressed with Vegeta's skill, but he didn't hold back and took the Judo out seemingly too. And as this goes down, Jiren looks at Goku and goes, it's just me and you now, Saiyan. Goku looks at him and goes, yes, it's just you and I. Goku immediately deactivates Super Saiyan God. And Jiren's like, what are you doing? Goku's like, well, I just noticed that you don't want to, I, I, I noticed that you want to become the strongest and you don't want to have long fights. You could have you could have uh, dragged these fights out and had more of a fun with it and actually built each other up. But instead, you like to win instantly. So, I'm going to use a move that I've never shown no one else but Whis. Goku closes his eyes and a still calmness goes aboard him. A uh, white aura appears over Goku and he goes to Ultra Instinct, Master Ultra Instinct. In doing so, Beerus is like, What? When did Goku do that? Whis! Whis is like, What do you mean? You've been asleep for three years. Of course Goku's gonna unlock that power. What do you expect? He almost surpassed you in his base form. In his Super Saiyan God blue form, he's stronger than you, Lord Beerus. Take that into consideration. Beerus is like, I, I know, but uh, 
Master Ultra Instinct. G Goku. Vegeta's looking like, goes, is that something special? Barris is like, special? You'll never hit him again in your life. And if he was to hit you, it will be like dying. Vegeta's like, uh, uh. Kakarot has just utterly destroyed, Goku has utterly destroyed his limits. And Barris smiles, he's beyond what I expected. He sits down, all the other gods of destruction look on, they're like, what? And Goku just stands there right in front of Jiren. Jiren rushes at Goku, but Goku moves right behind him. 50 punches instead of like 11, 50 punches hit Jiren. And Jiren's about to black out, he turns around, but Goku just turns swiftly, spins around, and, st and steps into Jiren's guard, and just instantly punches him straight in the gut. And punching Jiren in the gut, he completely blacks out, and Goku explodes him straight out of the ring, and sends him flying like a max speed. And Jiren loses immediately. Goku um, deactivates Master Ultra Instinct, and Zeno comes over to him and goes, Wow, Goku, that was incredible! Now, in the Grand Prix Springs of Dragon Balls, he goes, You can make any wish you like, Goku, any wish you want, no matter what. Even if it's a selfish one. Goku looks at it and goes, Well, I've already made a selfish wish in my life one time, so I'm not going to do that. Instead, um, Grand Priest, uh, I would like for you to revive everyone that was destroyed in this, everyone that was erased in this tournament. And it goes very well. They all get revived, then Goku goes back home. Now, what goes home, what happens is Goku begins to train on the next generation. He wants to make sure that Bardock, um, Goten and Trunks are strong, even Gohan, to learn Super Saiyan God. Bear in mind, all of them got their potentials unlocked, there, so they're extremely strong. They're all really strong, okay? I don't know why you Super Saiyan multipliers, but yeah, they don't need to go Super Saiyan no more. It's their base form. Elder Kai made sure of that. And so what goes down is, as Goku and them are training, and everything like that, this is when Nappa comes back and tells Goku that he's made the wish. Nappa's like, Goku's like, what? And he goes, I've come here to ask if you can ask Kami to use the Namiki and Dragon Balls to bring everyone here. And he goes, what do you mean you made the wish? And he goes, yeah, I, I gathered the Earth Dragon Balls and asked to revive all the Saiyans that were killed by Frieza on that day. And all of them were revived, but I was told by Shenron that they're in the, the checkout station. And he goes, but um, their bodies are not there. So he wishes for their bodies to be there too. And so even though they got revived, their, their souls and their bodies are now in place. And they're in the lookout station, pretty much pissing off King Yama. And so Goku teleports to Kami and Kami's like, Ugh, as long as you vouch for them, Goku, I'm fine. He summoned Poronga and Poronga, Poronga uses the wish. Or Kami uses the wish to bring all Saiyans to Earth and bring them to Goku's area. By this time, every single Saiyan has been that been revived finds out by Vegeta early that Goku is practically well the new king. King Vegeta finds it unacceptable, but Vegeta goes farther. One, you're an insignificant speck compared to me, Kakarot, even our children. All right, so you, one, you should shut up, and two, Kakarot won. Well, bro, Raditz won for him fair and square, and because Raditz stood no chance against Kakarot, Kakarot became the leader. King Ve King Vegeta didn't like his spot. He's like very well. And so what goes down is all the Saiyans um, pledge themselves to Goku. Bardock and Gina are shocked to see both their sons, especially Goku being the new, the new the king of the Saiyans, you know? And Goku's like smiling, Raditz and Gina get to meet their grandchildren, both Bardock's and, uh, Bro Broly's and, Broly's, I mean Raditz and Goku's. Broly and Paragus are there, and when King Vegeta sees this, Paragus is angry and wants to take his anger up. But Goku just says, enough, Paragus. Paragus bows to Goku and he shuts up. He goes, what has happened has happened a lifetime ago. And he tells Paragus, time for you guys to leave your life here. I know you had extreme extreme hardships, but all elder Saiyans can come here. Come to my house itself and they can come live here. I've got thousands of rooms, uh, thousands of places for you guys to live, you know, big ass area. This is where I grew up, Mount Palsu. And so all the Saiyans live there in Bardock and all of them are just impressed. And Goku just shows them, well Goku tells Vegeta to so show them Super Saiyan, Super Saiyan 2 and Super Saiyan 3 and all that. Super Saiyan God and Super Saiyan Blue. Raditz can only go to Super Saiyan Blue, but Raditz is the Goku in a sense, and so he does Kaioken times 10. Super Saiyan Blue. Bear in mind that they merge it with their ultimate form, so they're all, they're all ridiculously strong. Which kind of shocks Beerus. Vegeta does the same, but with Evolution Blue. And he does it with his ultimate Super Saiyan Blue form. When e everyone sees this, they're like, what the hell? But if that's the case, you guys are the strongest, right? And Vegeta goes, no, Kakarot in his base form would kill us instantly at all these forms. We stand no chance. Oh, and the state father, Kakarot's more powerful than Lord Beerus himself. Bear what happens is uh, his mouth drops. Um, Par uh, Bra um, King Vegeta's mouth drops and he, he bows to Goku. When Lord Beerus comes, um, 
Goku states, I am stronger than all bearers, yes, but you will, you will respect him. He is the god of destruction after all. When Beerus comes to see all the saints, he goes, Ah, King Vegeta, ah, Vegeta, welcome to the land of the living. He goes, Don't waste your second chance, all right? I only allowed this because one, Goku is one of my greatest fighters I've ever fought against. He can even sum him up to be as almost as good as my angel. But at the same time, two, I owe Goku a greater gratitude. Debt of gratitude. A, a, a debt of gratitude. Goku's helped me and given me the greatest foods in the universe. And so, I will make sure that you guys keep yourselves in check. And so what goes down is Nappa is the main general that goes around saving the universe. But this is when he comes back to Earth and tells them what's happening with Moro. Moro escaped and is coming to Earth for the Dragon Balls. And Goku's like, what? And he goes, yeah. And not only that, there's a person named Granola here working for the Heaters. He's the one working with them as well. And we need to, um, we need to stop them. I'm not strong enough to get to this guy. He keeps taking my energy. He's using, um, well, magic to take, zap my energy. The only reason why I can know this thanks to my spiritual control. Goku goes, thank you, um, Nappa. I'll take a look into it. And Goku asks Nappa how's the forces. He goes, yeah, we're fully integrated with the, um, the, um, well, Galactic Patrol and everything's working well, to be honest. And he goes, good, good, good. And he goes, well, come back home now. Uh, he goes, oh, well, well, when you do come, can come back home, because Raditz, Nappa didn't make the wish over, and he told Goku, of course. What goes down is Nappa um, exclaims everything. He comes back to Earth and he's happy to see everyone. Everyone settles in really well, just like the Namekians, Earth has another set of um, race, Saiyans, purebreds. And, it's, and they begin to live and laugh and enjoy life on Earth. Things rapidly change for him because Goku is rich and he makes sure that everyone freely gets the same amount of wealth, you know, same same great life. And so, what goes down is Goku becomes one of the greatest Saiyan kings of all. By the time Moro gets to Earth, it's, yeah, not a good thing for him. Especially when he gets to Earth to try to absorb his king. Goku appears in space immediately and as Moro tries to attack Goku, Goku goes to master the Ultra Instinct and punches Moro right in the gut, seemingly killing him entirely. Goku opens his hand up and... Well, Lo and behold, even though Moro is not dead, he seemingly killed him. Goku opens his hand up and has a, a floating jar right in front of him and goes, Easiest way to deal with you guys, all you idiot, idiot, idiot um, users, magic users, and what is it? Um, immortals? Goku leaves the, um, the Mafia by Jara and seals Moro into the jar. And yep, he gives it to Beerus. Beerus just goes, This is a waste of time. He, he erases Moro entirely. And this is when Goku goes to um, the focus on the heater and, heaters and granola and that. And so they go to the world where he, um, Granola is from. Bardock hears upon this and he hears upon Gast and all them, the heaters. And he states that he wants to go with them too because he remembers them. And when he gets there, he, that, um, what happens is the Namekian that Bardock saved recognizes Bro, um, Bardock and they talk for a bit. And this is when um, Granola is, is, uh, tries to find the other Dragon Ball, which he does, and he's going to make his wish. But what goes down is Goku catches Granola. Granola gets angry, is about to attack. But this is when the Namekian that raised granola tells him the truth and that the heaters are all bad and when the heaters hear this they rush over and they want to attack they go to try to attack goku you know but unfortunately for them goku is a monster and he realized that all these guys are bad and he has no hesitations he kills all of them all the heaters um, um, immediately because they had a part to play with, with um free and moro they kill him entirely all the moro's men are dead the heaters are dead and Granola has time to uh, pretty much repent for the stupidity that he was about to place on himself. Goku states that Frieza is dead and has been dead for a while. And that all the Saiyans are on Earth, you know. He goes, why don't you use the Dragon Balls to revive your people? And what happens is the Namekian on, well, the planet where Granola comes from, states that um, that his Dragon Balls are not powerful enough in a sense to do so. And you have to sacrifice a life. Goku goes, oh, I'll be, I'll be right back. And what goes down is Goku goes back to Earth and he tells him upon the, um, uh, the Namekian on that planet where, where Granola is. I completely forgot the Namekian's name and Granola's homeworld, so I'm just going to say Granola. Or uh, Sorrel, Sorrel. Sorry, my bad, Sorrel. And so what happens is, one, the Namekians find out that there's another Namekian living and some of them want to go over to that world to help, help out. And so um, Goku helps them, you know. Not only that, Goku asks us if they can use the Dragon Balls to make a wish. So if you can hear people outside, I apologize. It's just people that can't be helped. But uh, Goku makes a wish, and all the Cerulean's that were killed by free um, Goku um, the Saiyans on that planet, and all all of them were revived immediately from. And when they when they get up, Granola hugs his mum and thanks Goku. Goku tells him, "Don't use the Dragon Ball stupidly. He knows he made the same mistake. 
He can't have fun like everyone else can. And so what goes down is after dealing with the granola and, and Sorrel and fixing all their problems and Earth and Earth Sorrel and all that become a staging point. Everyone becomes great. Um, planet Earth is the best, probably the best universe um, place in the majority of Universe 7. And it's because of this that Universe 7 become the top, the mortal leveling system over a period of time. And if you want to know what happens to Goku, Goku eventually becomes guarding the Earth. And he lives for a very long time. But the Saiyans eventually emerge with the humans and they spread freely. Namekians are accepted on the Earth, you know. And they spread freely just like um, the Saiyans do. And the world dramatically changes. And as Goku looks at his world, ponders how great his life choices are. And the fact that he made this wish. This is where I'm going to leave this What If Guys. I hope you guys like this. Please like and subscribe. Leave a comment down below. And yeah, I know this is a different What If. And I know I kind of rushed this movie. But in a sense, this Goku is extremely strong. Okay, and I actually try my best to slow it down. But Goku uh, wished to become the strongest. And he did become the strongest. Okay. And with all that, none of that backfire that Granola had. And so in turn... Goku is the strongest, and I know people will not agree with me, but this is, hey, that's their opinion. This is the What If Day I made, and I hope you guys all like this. But as usual, guys, this is Dr. Kahu saying peace.